Welcome back to Numbers on the Board. Numbers on the Board! Yes! Let me get some skin, my friend. Got you, my boy. Ah, 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 ah. Bada boom, bada bam. Welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. I want to remind you guys to leave a like and subscribe to the channel as we are on our road back to 100,000 subscribers. We see the numbers. I'm seeing it go up by 500 every single day. I want to see it jump by 1,000 today. And you know what's crazy? I see the comments. I saw someone say, damn, I didn't know y'all boys was back filming. Yeah. So that means... That some what? people within the algorithm still don't know we back. 100%. Some people still think we just we just left. And you know what? I knew this was going to happen. I saw it happen to some friend of ours, um, formerly known as the Starters, now as No Dunks. They've been under their new name for like three years now, and they, stay, they say they still get that comment. So it's going to oh, happen. Wow. No matter if we produce or we push it on Twitter, on Instagram, whatever, whatever, there are going to be some people that's just going to miss it out. It just shows you that like... Twitter, Instagram, like that audience is completely different from your YouTube audience. Exactly. And like some of those people on YouTube don't actually use Twitter or Instagram. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I don't know. I can imagine only having YouTube as my main social media. I've thing. gotten like, I've gotten a lot of like DMs and even like uh, messages from stream where people say like, I don't have a Twitter when I tell them DM me. Oh. And I kind of figured like, especially like, it just happened more often than not, you know, yeah. for somebody who uses Twitter so regularly. Smart for them to not have a Twitter. Yeah, for Go real. over to Spotify, go over to Apple, and give us five stars as we continue to climb up the podcasting audio mm -hmm. ladder. Now, I do want to say some housekeeping stuff. Uh, because we're going to Indianapolis um, in a couple days, we will not have a Saturday episode. We will be there. We will be working. And hopefully, while we're there, we, well, not hopefully, 100% we on, we on the scene. We filming content for y'all for the future. So just, just chill out. Enjoy All-Star Weekend. And uh, we'll be back at norm normally scheduled stuff uh, that that Tuesday, that Tuesday. What's up? Draymond Green and Charles Barkley will host their own NBA All-Star Game broadcast together on Sunday. Oh, wow. Okay. All that right. actually sounds interesting. You like that? Yeah, that sounds... Breaking good. news, man. But we'll actually be at the game, so I won't even be hearing it. <laughs> so yeah. never mind. It doesn't. Yeah. If I was watching on TV, though, I would definitely... I think they made broadcast. a big mistake. Why? I know they over there, but they should have... That, that too with you? Oh, man. <laughs> That's a dream come true for me. Y'all ever listen to the broadcast where they have like former NBA players doing it? Mm -hmm. Y'all well, do? No. Yeah, I, I'll no. tune in for a Usually second. it's like the Clippers, I know for sure, do it. Yeah, they get like uh, Q Rich and, and some other people. Mm -hmm. Darius, man, yeah. Bill Walton usually I think, has yeah, one. Bill Walton does I want to so. say the Knicks maybe have done it. I know I've definitely seen Bill Walton do it before. I wanted to say I've maybe seen the Knicks do it he before. He is all psychedelic-y. Yeah, yeah, I've He's seen a couple teams do it. <laughs> Big Shroom guy. Uh, <laughs> would, you, would you rather watch Barkley and Draymond or Patrick and SpongeBob do the Super Bowl? Like, what What? what announcing crew is back? I didn't I'm even good. tune in to Patrick either. and SpongeBob. I didn't Why either. Would you not? I didn't either. Y'all crazy. That's what we watched yep. the you whole did? game. No. Well, no, on, you have it. a daughter, so it makes sense. No, no. We had people don't watch SpongeBob. She's not at SpongeBob age just yet. The, the panty raid? You think I want my near two-year-old to know about the panty raid? Maybe her guy did, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe what you really said that he was the That's crazy. Where did you, yeah, where did you ever come, for, come with that from? Nowhere. I just said it. Uh, Give us drop I ain't really put too much thought into it. Do you know what Godfather is? Do you know the responsibility? Yeah, okay. I, had, I had a God mother and a God brother. Okay. All right. Give us drop the mic. Um, today, drop the mic is simple. A lot of buzz going on with the Hawks and what they could potentially do in the nearby future. Who would you, matter of fact, if you have your GM hat, who do you think is more viable to trade, Dejounte or Trey? I think you'll get more return for Trey Young, mm -hmm. but um, so for me, that would probably be my. I would. I, I want to get the most return back that I could get possible if I'm breaking up this backcourt. Uh, Trey Young is a more valuable piece, but um, as a franchise, I still don't. Understand, I still don't know how far you can get with Trey Young being your lead guard. Just because he is so small. At least the conference finals. I mean, yeah, but that only happened once. He hasn't, he hasn't gotten Damn. A lot. There are a no, lot no, of no. great players that you love that have not got there more than once. Your favorite player of all time been there one goddamn time, and he got swept. That's true. Yeah, his and he's team, been in the league for 30 years almost. His team normally has been better than Trey Young, though. So. Okay. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. But it's just – when you're such a small guard, it it, it kind of hinders you a little bit, and that's that's really all. Um, I like bigger backcourts. That's more my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. um, you can have one small guy like Stephen Clay. Like I think that works because just because Clay is a legit six seven, um, so it's kind of tough. But I think for me, I would probably trade Dejounte just for the franchise sake. What was your question? 
Who do you think is more vi- like if you were the Hawks owner, uh-huh. or the, not the owner, the GM? Who do you think is the better option to trade for your team, Trey Young or Dejounte? Well, from his perspective, he's absolutely right. Mm-hmm. The Trey Young is going to bring you the more value in return, but as far as like uh, the team aspect, mm-hmm. I I just think that Trey Young is extremely dynamic. Um, I think he's been so good for so like so long that uh, kind of get taken for granted now. This mm-hmm. dude is he's really really good. I would keep him if my goal. It depends on what my goal is. If my goal is to build this team to get back to where we once were with Trey Young, that wasn't that long ago. I'm keeping Trey Young. Um, but if I'm looking to restart this whole thing, which I highly doubt they are trying to do, mm-hmm. then I'm trading Trey Young and I'm getting back. Uh, you know an enormous return of, of assets. I don't think it's that hard for them to get back to where they were, if I'm being honest with you. I think you have Trey Young. I think you stumbled on a gym in Jalen Johnson because I do not believe that they thought they were getting that when they drafted sure. him. And I think, boom, I'm stopping right there with that too. And now I'm filling the rest of the holes. Clint Capella you still have. Um, next year he'll be on the last year of his deal. You still have Aneka Kongwu. I'm just not a fan of the gaps which mm-hmm. I think they've always tried to hit on, but it's been super hard for them. They had Herder, then they felt the need to get rid of him. Um, to save money. You had the idea of Reddish and uh, Hunter when they first came into the league as 3 and D wings. That didn't really go your way. Hunter is now kind of more scoring. I think uh, – That read- off-the-bench punts from her, uh, Hunter since he's been back has been pretty solid. He, his first game back, he was real good. Yeah, I was like, like 27, you might as well take the, minutes. Take the <laughs> minutes restriction off. But um, <laughs> I think that's the, 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 the in-between – you, their next phase should be less is more theory, like the Celtics. I used to get, I said that for them. Mm-hmm. Less is more. So you have Trey, you have Johnson, and you have two bigs. That in between Trey and Johnson may not go may not go for names, mm-hmm. but go for fit. Three and D. Um, Bogdanovich has been damn, if they were winning, he'd be a six man of the year top three guy. You know what I'm saying? Top two, he might be in the argument of winning that that, that award. So I don't know, man. I, I wouldn't trade Trey Young. Unless I just knew this is it. They yeah. also need to find some consistency with the coaching. How many coaches have nah, we seen since yeah. then? The reason why I mostly bring it up is, for one, I think they like some people have kind of like liked the Hawks look when Trey Young was out a little bit and DeJounte was kind of running the show. They said that like they kind of liked when he was ahead of the snake. And then for two, as good as we know Trey Young to be in, for get to, conf- to the conference finals is great. But we – can you see the like the ceiling on it? You know, I and say this is not it for him to be this small anybody guard. Anybody with is, that argument, yeah. I would say I see the ceiling on a Dejounte Murray led team, and yeah, I'm a Dejounte sure, Murray fan. Sure. I think that if I'm trading Trey Young, I'm breaking it all down to start off with. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think like, you got to trade both of them. Yeah, that's Trae what I'm. Young. That's what I think too. Trey Young is one of the players that he's an All Star caliber player, All Star this year. Um, it's hard to find that type of player. Yeah, like he's one of the best passers in the league, and he's one of the best scorers in the league. Like. Those are the type of people you traditionally want to keep around. Mm-hmm. And and if you trade him away, hypothetically, keep DeJounte, you get a return of some first-round picks, maybe a young player. That's not doing anything because more likely than not, the first-round picks that you're using to draft is not going to equal what Trey Young is right now. Yeah. Or if you trade him away for something else, you're not going to get a player that is Trey Young right now. So it's either A, you trade DeJounte Murray and try to rebuild around Trey or just trade everything at the you know and, and just say, hey, we tried our experiment. It's over. Let's break it down to the studs. It's Jalen Johnson, Yekka Kongo, and, and then all of the draft capital in the world, which don't feel very realistic for Atlanta. So I would say keep Trey Young and keep trying to build around him because basically this regime, this this team, for the most part, is the previous regime's pieces. Mm-hmm. And they've been trying their hardest to, to do some moves here or there to get rid of this and try to build the team that we kind of want. It ain't been working out. They lost to the Bulls yesterday. I mean, Never good lose to the Bulls. Iota Sumo is a problem. Yeah. Especially um, when he's he guarding Trey Young. He is. Um, but, I mean, realistically, though, Trey Young's 25. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, he's still young. He, you don't have to really <laughs> rush. No he's pun like, intended. Man, that's. <laughs> <laughs> he always going to be young. He's always going to be young. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, when he's 20, at 25, I remember Shea was going through the same thing when he was 25. No, I mean, when Shea, not 25. I was going to say, Shea, he's Shea not 25 was still, yet. Shea was still, like, really good, but his team wasn't winning. He kind of stuck it through, and then eventually now look at him. He's the number two seed, one of the best teams out west. So you stick through the dark times, there's light at the end of the tunnel. 
So I think at the end of the day, if they do the right thing, Trey Young could be back as one of the best teams. Can you convince Trey Young to be cool with like a a two year absence of like not being good? Well, he's kind of going through that right now. This is basically yeah, year two of that. Um, I mean, there's it's probably going to be two more years. They're though. probably a playoff team. Um, well, they have a chance to be a playoff team, which yeah. would be just like last year. They were a playoff team. They took, what, one game, two game from the Celtics in that first round. I remember Trey Young's game winner. Um, but that's not his goal. That's not their goal to no. be the eight seed every single season, especially when three years ago they were in the conference finals. You know, um, but it's a good question. I, I don't envy the people that have to make the decisions because it's not going to be an easy decision to make. I will say I, off the top of my head, I cannot remember their draft capital. But this is the type of draft where I think the teams like the Hawks should cherish. Now, if you're a Hornets team and you need you need some 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 hits, some home some, run hits, yeah. you know, you might be like, huh, we a little weary. Uh or Portland, you know, teams like that. But I think a team like the Hawks, this is a draft where they they call these type of drafts weak because they don't have they can't see a surefire Victor Wimbyama in it. But I think majority of the NBA is role players and a lot of this class they have players that can come in and fill a role. And, and I the think best thing about like, them, they own the, the cheapest contracts in the, the NBA. The cheapest contracts. And I, th I think this draft class has um, a few of those guys that the Hawks, even in, a in, in the, the, the area they should be drafting in, I think they can go get a Kevin McCullough from Kansas, who is a guy who has been in, in college for years now. He'll come in kind of like um, a, a second-year pro. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's a wing. He can defend. He's been shooting the ball well, got good size, maybe can guard multiple positions. And like I said, he's an upperclassman player. Though I love those type of players for these type of teams that are not necessarily bottom feeders and are not necessarily at the top of their conference. And it's like we still need more, but we we don't need to shake up the roster to do it. You yeah. know what I mean? And I feel like there's a, a few guys like that, Dalton Connect from t Tennessee, um, you know, I think I think there are some guys out there uh, for teams like the the Hawks. So watch, hey, remember that when we see Kevin McCullough get drafted, Ryan Dunn from Virginia. I These guys, what, my, what about my boy Ryan? Ryan Dunn, Dunn oh can my fit God, there. You took him in a two K draft once upon a time, and now he's your guy. <laughs> I seen he was doing his thing. I seen one of his stat lines pop up on the timeline. Yeah, Ryan Ryan Dunn is another. Like there's those type of guys that I wouldn't be surprised if you see a Hawks team get them and then. The season comes around, and it's like, oh, shit, okay. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that these dudes are going to come in and be uh, Luka Doncic rookies, but it's they'll have like, the ability to When you to play take them, it's just stuff that you already know you're getting and you're going to like, and we'll work out the rest later. Mm -hmm. But I could work with what we got right now. I think Trey Young is that good. Mm -hmm. Trey Young is that good. Jalen Johnson and him have that nice uh, connection where I feel like you could bring in a rookie and just be like, man, listen, your role is to guard two positions, and, and make some shots occasionally. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? That's why when I heard they were interested in Quentin Grimes, I kind of liked that for them. Because Quentin Grimes is going to guard, he's going to get the hell out of Trey Young way, and he'll mm -hmm. be ready to shoot when he needs to. Yeah. The way J I, I didn't expect Jalen Johnson to, like, the role he does, especially when a lot of teams trap Trey Young on those high pick and rolls. Like, he does a really good job on that catch where he turns, he can score, he can pass, he can do all those type of things. So, I like that going forward when Former it comes point guard. when it comes playoff time and teams say, "Hey, everybody but Trey Young," I, I like that as an option. They are twenty and twenty when Jalen Johnson plays, which is pretty good because they're not good without him. Yeah. So, <laughs> what was their record without him um, when he missed that time? Let's see. Uh, without him, that's uh, four, four and twelve. Oh my god! Four and twelve. Yeah. That boy is the most valuable player in the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You play they 500 when you're not playing. It's, it's, it's a tough time. It is a tough That's time. They had crazy. a set like that for, oh, not as um, c consistent as that one, but it was like Cam Reddish after he missed a couple games. Like, oh, yeah. Lakers need him back. They had like one and four without him, one and five. It was one of their recent games, maybe against the Knicks. They showed him on the like sideline like 12 times in the game. Like bro. he was Taylor Swift or something. Yeah. Like they, they kept showing him. I'm like, bro, he's he was important for y'all, but he ain't Michael Jordan. Like mm -hmm. they acted like he is the missing piece for this Lakers. And team. when you do good for the Lakers, they are gonna do good to you too, bro. <laughs> Twenty nine percent three point shooter. He, he slowly started to figure <laughs> no, it out. I'm though. talking. I'm just talking. I'm just talking. Um, hey, do not take this for granted. We are over halfway through the NBA season, and, and we still, numbers on the board, still trying to come up with ways to talk about every single team, even the teams that don't deserve to be talked about anymore. I'm still over here. Trying to come up with creative ways to speak. <laughs> it's some of these things, man. We it's love y'all. Yeah, don't worry, we, we got your back. 
You got your back. Like, like chiropractic. chiropractic. Okay. Yeah. okay. Just, just give us a team. We'll fill in the blanks the rest of the way. Just the harsh reality, really, it's cap or no cap. the first cap or no cap of numbers on the board. Which oh, is, it is, right. It for, is all 30, for all 30 teams. All 30 teams. So what I'm going to do is I have a specific order that it's in, but because some of these teams it's hard to do, we'll just get the main things out of the way. The first one I'm going to do, this is just a very easy one. I hate to even put this out there because I love my Philly people. Cap or no cap, Joel and B returns this season. It's, when, you, ah. when you say harsh reality, yeah. this was the first one that came to my mind. Even yesterday in a text thread, I told um, Anthony, one of the guys we work with, like, and B got to be on that, that thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. it's like, yeah. when you think harsh reality, this is the this epitome is of, of it. This is the top one. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just, I'm going to say that's cap. I don't think he's returning this season. Um, just because it's a knee injury. I don't want to – after a month of plus of not playing basketball, going into the playoffs, it's, it's tough to just throw a guy into that, especially a guy who's injury prone like he is. And the playoffs is where you're supposed to be in your tip-top shape. Like you're supposed to have had rested like five games to get some bum teams at the end to where now you're coming in fresh, hot, ready. He's going to come in not having touched the basketball in months. It's, it's going to be tough. I'm gonna say. Wait, what was it? How did you pose the original question? Joel and B will return this season. Cap no cap. No cap. I think he's gonna return. Okay. I don't think it's gonna be pretty, and and the discourse around it is gonna be even worse. Where like, from him and his standpoint, it's like, oh my God, look, he he tore his meniscus and here he come back. That's not the reality of the way oh. NBA fans talk. So you think he tore his meniscus? Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Did no, 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 no. That's how I interpreted I all said, of that stuff. I said the same thing on the Heliocentric podcast a week ago, uh-huh. and a 76ers fan say, hey, it was a flap. It was, I say, yeah. listen, I know you're a 76ers fan. I'm it not trying to weigh in. It was a flap? I don't know they're... about the anatomy of the human body. What? Because, be, but he's not, he's not wrong because that's yeah. how the Sixers are trying to report it to them, their fans. But I told them, listen, bro, however they want to slice it, <laughs> that man meniscus I, is going to get worked on. Yeah. I saw a tweet by Brandon Sutterer, um, who is a, a guy that does videos like the guy you put in the chat, which is he's a doctor that does videos Explain about the NBA injuries. The NBA injuries. Yeah. Um, and he had a tweet after it came out. I'm, I'm looking through his account right now. I'm pretty sure well, he, he was says, calling out the Sixers, right? Yeah, he pretty yeah. sure. I'm pretty sure he said something like, "That's a weird way." To explain its hair yes. or something like oh, that. Wow. That's because if it was so simple of man, oh no, no, ain't the this is just a flap. They would not have seen they it here's, was here's the exact thing. Um this is from again Brandon Sutterer, and I apologize if I'm pronouncing his name wrong. I swear this team can't report anything straightforward regarding injuries. Repair equals trying to stitch the tear back together four to six month recovery. Sometimes they get in surgery and repairs can't be done, so it's just to trim out the da- damaged area. Um but assuming this means Embiid's season is over, that's from Dr. Brian Sutterer, who, again, is not in the procedure room, obviously. Right. Um, He's just speaking from, like, a doctor's perspective. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that was, that was my whole argument. Like, if it was just, like, this flap and it's not, like, a tear or anything, I don't think they would have seen 11. I don't, I don't want to put a number on it, but Shams, Wolge, they exhausted that. He's seen a lot of different people. They went mm-hmm. to a lot of different specialists. This is something, a plan that they were thinking about how they were going to do it. If I just got something that ain't that big of a deal in my knee, it would be a simple plan. Hey, I'm going to do this, do that, do that. But when they exhausting all of these different things, that's what makes me a little weary. I'm also with Derek. Like, playoff basketball is a different beast. Joel and B, how much does he weigh? 285? Something like that. I see, like the official, I see the official list. 260, 270. So... As, at his size, 280. So he weighs 280. Game shape, I'm guessing. Yep. When he gets this, when he gets this, this whatever you want to call it done, I don't want to say the wrong thing, irritate nobody. I want to call it a surgery. Like, no, it's not a surgery, it's a procedure. It's a procedure, not a surgery. <laughs> um, did he go to sleep or did he not? Because that's when he gets his me. work done, me, me knowing a little because I had an injury, you can't be on it. There's going to be a certain period of time where you can't do nothing. Then it's going to go from doing nothing to doing rehab for just that. Then he's going to come back and have to rehab his uh, wind and get in game shape. And then to just throw him into the midst of the playoffs, ah, man. I mean, I'm 50-50. I'm with Derek. I'm also with KB. I can see him coming back, but I just don't think it would be pretty. Mm -hmm. And that's why if I was making the decisions, I would just tell him, let's just chill. I I would do the same. Um, I was thinking the same thing with KB. I got no cap. I feel like he will come back. It just probably won't be the best. 
like the way we were describing it, it reminds me of not saying the career arc is going to go that way, but like how Blake Griffin tried to come back on one knee. And yeah, he might get box. him a game. That's a great comparison. He might get Mike. him a game, but it's just like it's just not going to be your ultimate goal. It's a great goal. comparison, Mike. Even though he's not as explosive, that's a great comparison. He was really out there on one one leg, leg bro. One leg to get one to win. To get one win, and he got it. I wish that we didn't have to have an injury report, because um, I would like to see just like game two of the first round of the playoffs, Joel and B just run out of the tunnel when nobody <laughs> expected it. Oh yeah, true. I, w- I would that, actually like take the fine like for that surprise. moment. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a fifteen thousand dollar fine. You dare you dare Maury and co- you tell the owner like, "Hey, fifteen k, let's just do this for." But boy, fans. if he do that and he surprised them and he put up a shitter, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god, yeah, you can't come out on him, man, boy, yeah, like, put up a shitter, yeah, because like your especially your first game, yeah, it, it's probably the, not the best for Joel and B, but for the fans to see him run out the time, like, oh my god, he's here. It's like some WWE stuff. No, That's yeah. exactly what it's like. Uh, this next one. This is a this is an interesting one. This this was a team that was it was hard for me to come up with one that wasn't so like duh. It's the Bucks. Mm-hmm. The Bucks have to start thinking of a future that doesn't involve Chris Middleton. Cap or no cap? No that's cap. A good, that's a good question. No cap. I think it's kind of for the past probably like two years. I know he's been kind of fighting injuries and everything, but I think he's just getting older and he's not as as effective as he was when they did win the championship. Yeah, uh, if they traded Drew, Chris, you're not safe either. Um, now, now Drew also had immense amount of value, value obviously. Yes. Yeah. Um, Chris doesn't have that because he hasn't really done much over the last two years. But in the games he has played, at least recently, he had been looking better. Um, but the setback obviously sucks. Uh, I was hoping your cap and no cap was about the my MVP, Giannis Antetokounmpo. But that would that would be too, you know. Straightforward because yeah. he's mm-hmm. hooping. The MVP <laughs> poll, came, a straw poll, came out for ESPN earlier today, and they had him number three behind uh, Shea Jokic, Jokic and Shea. Um, I like that. He's my one at the moment. He's your one. He's my I one at the moment. That. Especially after a game like last night, Man. he should be your one. Yeah. Was just... Only thing that's hindering his resume is like, damn, y'all did just fire y'all coach when y'all were 37, <laughs> 13, <laughs> and that was the coach that you wanted. That's damn, not his fault though. Damn, you did almost fight the entire Indiana Pacer team for a ball. Um, hey, I wish somebody would bring that up in the MVP <laughs> race. <laughs> and he's not even in the first few games of yeah. the season. He's not even my one, but I'll be damned if they say that. I think in their last 13 games before last night, they were like six and seven. So they haven't been playing amazing basketball, obviously, since Doc has been there. Um, but with 30 something games left, I'm, I would not be surprised if he climbed up that ladder and stole one. The reason I pose this question is just because you, you, you change out your coaches. Some of the same things are still happening. So what that tells you is it's not it wasn't a co- it's not so much of a coaching thing. Yeah, you like Doc better. He may have a better voice in the locker room and can take this team where you want it to be. But at the end of the day, even outside of that, the same things pop up, which is your backcourt defensively is Damian Lillard and Malik Beasley, and that's just going to put you in a certain spot. That was uh, as a team that's looking to compete. Like that was part of the problem with Damon Portland is he needed defensive wings around him to help him on that side of the ball. You know, I'm actually way more optimistic about it because it's flipped on his head where their defense has been solid, but their offense is not. Because I think before it. They were like the 22nd worst defense. And then their offense was like number three or number four. Um, The offense has fallen off. Well, Damian Lillard is struggling. I'm going to say this too. But the defense has been a lot better since Doc has taken over. Just to be devil's advocate. The defense. (laughs) <laughs> the defense was so bad that I had no choice to get back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I don't want to, you know what I mean? I want to give them credit, but I still, is the defense better enough that makes you feel comfortable in a tough Eastern Conference? Because they're going to have to face, you know, they're going to have to face some some teams. Uh, for me, no. I, it, it still doesn't look convincing. Especially when we were in person watching them play the um, Timberwolves. Anthony Edwards was just getting, I know it's Anthony Edwards. I know it's Anthony Edwards. But Malik, that, Malik they that had an eight-man rotation that but, night. But Malik true. Beasley that's was true. getting cooked, and it was well, yeah. and that's and it's like, <laughs> if I'm going against the Celtics, where am I hiding? Mm, mm. Where am I hiding one of them? Andrew Holiday may slow down Dame, mm. and, and it's like it's nowhere where you can. Didn't want to include that in the. I want to say that <laughs> Derek White and Drew Holiday. No, uh, okay, all right. Yeah. If they play each other, be ready to put thirty five hundred dollars up on the bet. There's going to be zero minutes where Dame is not guard about one of I the know. best in the league. I know <laughs> it's going to be really, really tough in that series. And I already saw what Drew did to him when he was a Pelican. A Pelican. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the Pelican fly. <laughs> what year is it? Is that 2018? Ah, uh, yeah. It's like 2018, so, yeah. 2017, or 2018. Was it AD, thought, wasn't that AD's last year as a Pelican too? 
Mm. Second to last year. Yes, yeah, second yeah. to last. Because you had Rondo, Drew. That 80. was like a crazy upset. I remember where I was when that last game. I was in Milwaukee. It was a 3-6 upset. Yeah, I was in Milwaukee. Like, no way they about to pull this off. And they did. Um, but, I, no, I completely understand what you're saying, though. But I, I'm going to give them a slight pass. That was deadline day. They had traded away three people. And the, one of the people they got back couldn't even suit up. It was A.J. Green. Um, My boy AJ Grinning. And he had a night then. Yeah, he he was night. shooting that. <laughs> the next night he came out and was shooting that thing. Yes, he, yes. He, he ain't made he him like he did the other all. night, but he was shooting him. He's one of those players that when the shot goes up, I'm assuming it's going in. Yeah. He do got one of those shots, though. It's so ugly. <laughs> I, mean, I be feeling like that was Sam Merrill. Yes. Yeah. I what do these people I, have I, in common? I, I love it. They're Sam shooters. House? They're shooters. Sam Hauser, too. <laughs> oh, just Adam Sam Hauser, yeah. <laughs> you know, I felt the same way about JJ Reddick. Hell yeah. But no, that's a good question. I think. Um, no cap. They have to think about life without Chris. Less is more. Get you a perimeter defender, man. Yeah, I'm interested to see what the package would be for Chris Middleton. He is making like 30 M's. Mm-hmm. So, like, as, a, as an opposing team, do I want to take that on? Because he just signed that extension. Yes, he did. So, would you, Let me ask you this. Would you give up? Oh, I might be cooking some in my head. But he don't make around 30 M's. Would you do a swap? Or it won't, maybe not a swap. But would you do a deal if you're Memphis? You get okay. back Middleton, and then the Bucks can get Marcus Smart. Oh, I'm just I'm just freestyle. No, no, no. I'm just freestyle. That actually that sounds decent. I but think I think because I think that gives you that defensive minded backcourt next to Damian Lillard. You now move Malik Beasley to the bench, which I think is where he would thrive best. I don't really like him as a starter. Kind of just he doesn't give me starter vibes. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, Marcus Smart next to Dame would be good. I just don't know what you're doing at that three spot though. Mm-hmm. That three spot, you still don't want to be small there. So like you still need like your good six eight, six eight guy. But you do have Brook and Giannis, so maybe you don't. I don't uh, love it. We traded Steven Adams and and stuff to bring in Chris Middleton. We traded away two first round picks for Marcus Smart turned to Chris Middleton. I'd be pissed if I was a Grizzly fan if that but happened. But they about to potentially have a top pick. Yeah. And so. they would and they starting lineup potentially could be like kind of small. It's gonna be Marcus Smart, Ja, and Bain. I, that's what I don't like. Yeah, that they they have three guards. Well, they starting. got seven months until then. Because then you, <laughs> if you do that deal, you're not looking at Ja, Bain, Chris Middleton, Middleton, Jaron, and, and then whatever happened in your draft. Yeah. You also have developed and is continuing to develop Vince Williams, Gigi Jackson. You still have Luke Kennard. <laughs> so, you know. Should I? What they get back from uh for the Stephen Adams trade? Victor Oladipo. That they waive, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. And then Brandon Clark also. Brandon Clark will be, be back. back eventually. Yeah. What if you do that? What if he? What if he helps make the money match? You get now? Nah, hell no, nah, Grizzlies ain't doing that shit. No. Nah. Brandon Clark Marcus and Marcus Smart, Smart for Chris <laughs> Littleton. Nah. Yeah, I'm the sorry. Bucks GM will be. I'm sorry, Cash John Money Chris. Horse. He'll be cooking. John John, John Heist. Because you'd be stealing from other yeah. teams. And he, that means they keeping Bobby, too? Oh, man, that's crazy. Too, hey, my one complaint about the Bucks under Doc Rivers. Too Rivers, much, Doc, too too much, Bobby, much Portis. Bobby Portis, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it blows my mind how many they, bad they really shots run the, Are they really running oh the second unit? <laughs> bro, it's bad. And he be on the court with Giannis sometimes. Yes. And they feeding him in a post. He doing a turnaround. Like, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. What are we doing? He cooking. I would, I would turn it down to, 10%, least. and I would be perfect with Bobby Portis' production, down 10%. Then we on the Bulls now. <laughs> the I <laughs> the sumo is the next Manu Ginobili. <laughs> <Cap and O-Cap. laughs> this shit going to blow you a little bit. <laughs> The Bulls will have the same starting lineup next year. <laughs> uh, no and what I mean by same starting lineup it's is DeMar, Kobe White, Zach, Zach DeMar, Vucevic. That four. Patrick Williams. You know, it yeah, could be Patrick yeah. Williams, but they got Torrey Craig, and they might lose him and oh, then bring somebody man. else to do the same shit. So I don't know. But that that four will be started next year. <laughs> cap or no cap? <laughs> uh, it, just from the words. It's that harsh the, reality, the man. It's so harsh reality office, for sure. It just makes it feel like it's no cap. They talking about they want him long. They want Demar long term. They don't. They didn't trade him at the deadline. It it just all seems like it's going in direction of no cap. So I'm gonna say no cap. I wonder what's considered a long. I hope a long term deal for them is in like five years. I hope they're not giving them nothing like that. Hey, if it's more than two, I'm pissed. Yeah. If it's more, than, actually, I'm pissed regardless. <laughs> Whether he walks, he resigns. There is no win scenario for this. 
Unless mm-hmm. he signed, if he signs a de- Vucevic's deal it's at the moment mil. wasn't bad. Yeah, Vucevic is a player that should be making around fifteen to eighteen. He's making eighteen. Demar probably turned down an offer of 22, 23. So that means that he wants 27, 28, 30. And, and if that happens, I'm pissed. And when he walks for nothing, I'm equally pissed. There's no win. There's no win. I'm never going to praise them for whatever they do with Demar DeRozan, unless it is a sign and trade, which I might be interested in this offseason. And I'm not mad at him. I'm, for me personally, I would take more money to stay here in Chicago and not compete. But if I'm not competing for anything, why would I just – why would I take less? Because that's the player's finesse. They do that, and then eventually that team is going to trade you, so you got your bag, and then you yeah. eventually going to play for exactly. something anyway. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So he going to get his bag and probably get traded anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say it's Cap, man. I want to say there's just no way. They at least they got to trade at least one of them. You got some optimism. At least one okay, of them. Because he knows the way he that they walk he in with those of, four. He a fan of the – Bullshit as a Lakers who is gonna be like, what y'all doing with over there with Zach? <laughs> we 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 uh we panicking. It's just Zach. That's not even Zach's that. It's just, they didn't have the same team for a couple of years now. At least Kobe White jumped. Months. They could at least show you something. But I mean, they had this this off this uh, deadline to do something. They didn't do anything. I'm I'm not saying you got to make the 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 mm-hmm. team shaking deal where Demar and Zach get traded, but they didn't even give up Caruso. Yeah, that's Moses probably. Moody I think that was one of the worst things that. You, you want that? That was on the table. They said no. Did you want it? I would have taken it in a heartbeat. I feel like a first, yes, first round pick. And y'all got know. y'all picked this uh, year? I don't know, Mike. Because like I was going to say, they still owe a pick to the Spurs. I was going to say. For the DeMar trade. And I don't know when they can make it. If you're going to break it up. Pick who are they going to keep? Right. Because mm-hmm. so no, you know they don't have a pick. I mean, you either have the option to keep it or, right. or stay together, like you said, or you can move one of them. Maybe they didn't love it, or they just felt like it's just they weren't ready to be that bad. Or no, suck, suck. their GM is telling us what he thinks. He says that he think we could compete with this. We don't have to think no more what they think, and he's telling us that he not thinking. P. He not <laughs> thinking. <laughs> That's I don't care what he say no more. I literally see I'm them. just saying because you saying man, maybe they ain't want to be that. Now he tell us okay. what he, what's on his mind yeah. when he made these. Decisions. I just feel the reality. Harsh is, reality is they. <laughs> Might be poorly ran. Cooper, 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 uh, flag is in the next year's draft. Hey, I'm in on Coop. Trade. What's everybody. his best trait? You know what was funny? I, he, I saw him block three shots at even, Peace Jam. I'm not even trying to call you out right now, but I seen something that made me fuck. Oh man, I'm, I almost cry real tears. Mm. So KB on his podcast had Double O on there, mm-hmm. and I'm watching him talk to Double O or whatever. And he talking about the Chino Hills team or whatever. Mm-hmm. Then Double O going to a, uh, he's talking about some other basketball team or another year, and he started naming dudes. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it's no way KB know <laughs> yeah, who no. the hell he talking about. I gave KB him and I'm like, oh yeah, they they had some hoopers on that team. <laughs> 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 These are guys who didn't go to the NBA, but they yeah. was good in college. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, man, KB don't know who, nothing well yeah. what he talking about. <laughs> so I'm like, oh yeah, they had some hoopers on. Can that you team. imagine the alternative, like? Who is that? The whole right. podcast yeah. him explaining to people that's like, oh yeah, he went to where? It was just funny. Oh, okay, okay. A shout yeah. out to the um, whoever edited the clip or whatever though. He he had them um in a prime. That's Mello. Shout out to my boy Mello. Um, but yeah, the that boys. episode tanked. By the way, what that mean? Did not do well. No, mm-hmm. people didn't care about Double O. Nah, I guess not. He was a great guy though. Would have him back. <laughs> Would definitely have him back. With the recent with the recent success. The playoffs shape up to be all or nothing with Donovan Mitchell. Cap or no cap for the Cavaliers. And what I'm meaning by that is they can't afford to flop. You got, you know, Donovan has been hooping. This seems like a team that can win because they, what, 17 and 1, 18 and 1 in the last however many games? They just lost last night. They've been, oh, okay. It was 17 and 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, the most on fire team. You Even without Mobley, even without. Um, my mind running. Yeah, like, uh, no, they, they had Garland. 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 Yeah, Garland, yeah. If you go into the playoffs now and have a first-round exit or something similar to last year, does, is that where it's like, damn. Yeah, I think for sure <laughs> if you get up in the first round, you definitely not going to look at this roster and say, okay, time to move on. Um, mm-hmm. You can't have another first-round exit. Um, actually, no. They, were they a first-round exit? Oh, yeah, they lost to the Knicks, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. So yeah, you definitely got to now look at it. As in DG and Oi, the um, Donovan Mitchell's probably gonna get moved. I, yeah. At least in my mind, this year is the Cavs like 
this is their year to audition to Donovan Mitchell. Like, the grass is not always greener on the other side. Because mm. Donovan is definitely looking at teams like the Knicks, whoever, just like, it could hey, be a lot better. Uh, I think, Donovan, you missed your window for the Knicks. Yeah. It's going to be a team out there interested in Donovan sure, Mitchell. Sure. And he's going to be like, man, well, we already got a really good roster and we still not going anywhere. I might as well go to a place I also like where I also can hoop. And maybe it might be the same results or maybe it's a team they give me. I think they have to audition and like, no. Nah, we need to get to like the conference finals. We got finals. a real we got, chance. We, yeah. yeah, they. This is their audition this year. Like, if you leave, you just a, a city groupie. You leave it because you just want to be. You just want to go to New York. Yeah, you mm-hmm. just want to be in. Because if it was about winning, we got everything you need to win right. here. Right. I agree. Yeah, um, I saw some people mocking up Darius Garland's race for this exact scenario. And what was one of them? Uh, they weren't very good. But I it, tried to mock up some when we was on our own trade deadline, but it just made me interested because I didn't even think about the idea of that happening. Yeah, and I don't think Cavs fans should because again they play phenomenal basketball. But if that bridge does come and you have to make that decision, it's like oh, Darius Garland will be super valuable to some of the t- especially like an Orlando Magic, a younger team that could sure. use a go- some guard play. Guys. But they do they have anything that the 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 Cavs no. would want? Is yeah. they're competing with Donovan Mitchell? Um, to answer your original question, um, I'm going to say no cap. Because I think a flame out in the first round does make everybody look at themselves in the mirror and say, oh, is this really what we're here for? Um, I think anything other than that, if they go to a second round series and they, let's say, lose in six, lose in seven, I think Don, there's a world where Donovan's like, okay, I see the yeah. the blueprint of what could look good. You know? And then the front office can go into the offseason and be like, what can we fix and retool to the roster? Mm-hmm. And uh, I think there's a world where they could probably come back with the same roster. Because they start lineup is really good. Yes. I love it. Mm-hmm. Especially if Evan Mobley continue to develop offensively the way he is, I, it's, I think the sky's the limit with this lineup. Real quick off the top, of my I, w- head. I was talking so much goodness about Evan Mobley like before yesterday's game. Man, JB didn't even close with him, <laughs> and that was this thing I mentioned like two two episodes ago. Remember when when I was like, well, we haven't seen a scenario where JB has to pick one or the other to close. And this was the game where he did that. He closed with Jared Allen and a bunch of shooters. And they ended up losing the game, but it, it looked better than I would assume it would have looked down in the clutch time with both of the centers because it was just spread for Donovan, Donovan and for yeah. Darius to do. And Donovan almost put off some ridiculous stuff to make that comeback happen. Shout out to Buddy Heald, who's looked phenomenal. He has, can, don't sleep on campaign either. <laughs> <laughs> night, night. <laughs> um... What 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 about Darius Garland in Miami? But I don't yeah. I don't see the Cavs helping a team that's going to be yeah. around. His ass yeah. going to the Western Conference. That's yeah, for yeah. sure. It's probably smarter for them. His ass going to the Timberwolves. You remember the Knicks was like, nah, we're not trading Q Grimes to an Eastern Conference. He's going team. to the Timberwolves for Cat, and they're going to do they're going to do <laughs> all down. three of them. They're going to do like they finally get the two big lineup to work, and then they just break it up. <laughs> but no, they're going they're going to do the. Uh, you know how Laurie Marketing was a three. Yeah, Cat at that three. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> That's decent. I can't shake that one. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the Pelicans got everything that you could potentially need. Draft capital. Draft Herb players. Jones. Play. Man, get well soon. Dyson Daniels. That Man, broke my that heart, man I'm tired of seeing meniscus on my timeline. Yeah, facts. <laughs> facts. They going to make me kiss my meniscus. Wherever it's at. It's I somewhere. Like right here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you point at your shin? No, like underneath <laughs> your knee. Your knee, was, your knee go that long? Where's your knee? At, I Mike? said underneath your knee. It's underneath your knee. I, I think the I don't, I'm not no doctor. I think I the ACL is the ACL's on the top of your knee. I think the meniscus is somewhere. It's like above your knee. Yeah. I, I would assume that it's in your knee. You going under your knee to your shin? Like, about your shin is like down here. This is your shin. The meniscus. True. Oh, I can't look, just looking at this. That's why they wear shin guards. It's, it's like, in. <laughs> it's not below. It's literally in the knee. The connecting okay. part that makes mm. your leg. It's like the shocks. Shock absorbers. Yeah, you a smart man. Yep. Matter of fact, let's stop all of this. Let's talk about the anatomy. No, the, the uh, accretion. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah. let's talk about when uh, <laughs> KB had somebody Photoshop him in that Mobamba jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Mobamba uh, fan club. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mobamba fan club. Was, about, what, what made you just think about that? <laughs> I don't know. Because you bogus know. as hell. That's why. <laughs> yeah. And, and that, then, and what's worse, oh, being the leader of Mobile. Come on, of now. Mo- <laughs> come on <now. laughs> Being the leader of the Mo Bamba fan club or seeing Mo Bamba doing this. <laughs> That's Mo Bamba, y'all. Mo Bamba was even surprised that happened. You're right. He was like, damn. Yeah, I was the leader of the fan club, and never did I think, like, <laughs> let me double check to look at Mo Bamba. While he's on crutches, let me put this camera he like He heard the face. song. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who made that song? What song? What, Mo Bamba? Oh, yeah. Designer. 
<laughs> <laughs> Guess again. I love, the, I love that confidence. The confidence. Oh, you say things. It was uh. He I not forgot. gonna guess. He don't. I even know, know what it is. Hey, Cause clear, Kanye sampled it on. Um, clearly, you don't. You th- on th- Life th- of Pablo. Th- no, th- that is Design and Panda. <laughs> yeah, that, that is. Oh, you yeah. talking about Panda? No, I don't remember. No, we're not talking about Panda. Oh, no, that's uh, Kodak Black. <laughs> Wait, <what is> ha- <laughs> we're not talking about Panda. <laughs> what is happening? We're right talking now? about the song Mo Bamba. Did you Who say made that's that song? Kodak? That's not, it wasn't Kodak? Kodak Brown? Kodak Brown. <laughs> <laughs> you got some history, bro. Oh, my God. Maybe it's crazy. It, Kodak Brown is actually an artist. Ronald Reagan made that song. No. Kodak Brown is a real artist? <laughs> yes. <laughs> is it a parody no, account? Not. Like 22 no, Savage? No. If you look up Kodak Brown, he's a real I'm going to Apple artist. Music right now. <laughs> he got seven streams. That's that no, I think he has more. I looked him up on Spotify. I think Kodak. Did you do that on purpose? Because you thought that was Kodak. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to look up Kodak Black, but I looked up Kodak Brown. <laughs> he's Brown. not lying. He's a real artist. How, how many streams? Oh, you on Apple? It's just a two, 2017 EP. There's nothing. Oh, okay. Kodak Brown. Let's, oh my! I God. didn't know that was a real person. So hey, maybe when hey, you were talking about him, he was being for real. Go, uh, go string Kodak Brown, Brown new album, man. This don't do all. that. We don't know what he talking about. <laughs> what he about? <laughs> uh, it's actually a lot of. Co- okay, okay. I'm sorry. It was Sheck West. Though. Sheck West, man. Oh uh, yeah. I Not, remember did we meet him at Madison Square? Yes, we did. Yeah, we, yes, we did. Say, hey, what up, boy? When are you <laughs> dropping part two? <laughs> Um, next team, we have the Celtics. Designer? Designer. That's crazy. Black X6, white X6, <laughs> Panda. <laughs> um, can the Celtics win a championship being so jump shot happy? Cap or no? I mean, the, the Celtics can win a championship being jump shot happy. Cap or no cap? Uh, I'm going to say cap because it just seems tough. You got to gotta be able to get the easy ones. Like, you can't rely on tough mid-range pull-ups and tough sidestep threes. Porzingis, uh, Porzingis isn't the guy that's really getting to the basket. They whole starting lineup doesn't really get to the basket. And it's crazy to see talents like Brown and Tatum, who we know have all the skill set in the world to get to the basket, put pressure on the rim, and it doesn't happen. And it, I think in a playoff series, you can't rely on that when a team can scheme around and defend. A team like the Heat might throw zone at you, make you think a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's going to be tough to always try to figure out how can I get this tough jump shot off against Bam? Sometimes you got to put pressure on the rim and just force the defense to foul you. Because sometimes the best offense is just free free throws. Like the other night, Donovan Mitchell took 17 free throws. I don't know the last time I saw Jason Tatum do that. Mm-hmm. Well, while y'all talk, I'm looking tired to tell you when the last time he did that. If he did it a week ago, you going to apologize? You said that. Yeah. I just want to. He said, yeah. Make sure I get the question right. You said that they they can win with on jumpers yeah. or being jump uh, jump shot heavy. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's yeah, that's the question. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say no cap. I think that's kind of been like their their major flaw. I've been saying before we kind of started the podcast that like I think Porzingis is their biggest X factor just because he can get the in between game even when he does take tough jumpers. I mean, he's most of the time got like a foot on somebody or he's shooting right over him, but he does give them that inside presence sometimes, especially against smaller teams. But I, I can't even lie. Even when teams where they seem or games where they're struggling to shoot the ball, they still find ways to pull it out and get the W. Yeah. I really like the you know the role players and how they play. Drew Holiday, um, Derek White, and Al Horford. They just like they make everything fit together so nicely. You know, a lot of times when the ball seems to get stuck and you know Jason Tatum throwing it back out, Al Horford, Drew, Holiday, they all make the extra pass. Yeah. They always find a. They usually do find a good shot. So I want to say they can. I think the defense is really like the upside, and then the offense they they can score with anybody. You know, let them get hot. I and, just think the top teams when you talk about like free throws, their top players are getting to the free throw line, like Jokic, Giannis, <laughs> Joel, um, even like a guy like Dame. Dame gets to the line a lot. Mm-hmm. Like you got to be able to like consistently. Yeah. Put Do you remember the game the against? This is back in the, like this is the in season tournament, but I thought the perfect example of this is like. You remember they going against the Pacers? Yeah. Jalen Brown didn't do nothing but the first half, but attack the paint. Yes. And, but they kind of went away from that in that second half. And I think the Pacers tightened up on defense a little bit more. But, like, that's when they went to those jump shots heavy and they, they ended up losing that game. I think they just need to consistently, if they had the matchup, which most nights they do, just keep being aggressive and getting to the paint. Two, two feet in the paint is, like, I think one of the most important things when it comes to basketball. Yeah. Two feet in the, the paint. whole defense to react. Why don't you get – 
The most prized possession in the world is the ball. <laughs> if you get it close Sound to like the Coach basket, <laughs> everybody has to now react to it. And now you generate more open shots. It's easier. It's, mm -hmm. It just makes everything so much easier. The most free throws Jason Tatum attempted this year is 19, which was less than a month ago. Is that against the – don't tell me. Is that a nasty televised game? I don't know if you could be able to tell that from basketball reference or something. I can't. Why do I feel like I know that game? It don't matter. Um, it was against the Mavericks. Okay, I did not know that. <laughs> I did not know that game. I think they can. Uh, it's just so. It's just so much harder to do it without. Yeah. Because of you, I don't know which one of y'all mentioned Porzingis. Porzingis' health is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. He's the most important player this season because when he is healthy, they are damn near unfuckwittable. If he is not healthy, they're very vulnerable. I, I mean, did, we're not. That's not standing like he's Chris an all-star caliber. Porzingis, man. I feel like that's every team he's been on, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, uh, and um, I think they can do it. Because um, in, in the playoffs, we have seen a guy like Tatum last year in the Eastern Conference Finals um, where they obviously lost in seven to Miami Heat. He hurt his ankle. He hurt his ankle, but they, he also had like three or four games in this series where he did have double-digit free throw attempts. So we've seen him individually put pressure on the rim. But there are times when I'm watching this team play and I'm like, y'all running five out at the moment. The guy guard and Jalen Brown cannot fuck with Jalen Brown. Yes. Mm -hmm. How are we not just saying attack, attack, attack? Because there is no real help that they can help off of, yeah. uh, and and that's that's Missoula ball at the end of the day. And I just went while y'all were talking. I went to see like, okay, do they ramp it up in the playoffs? Like last year, where they because last year they also did not get to the basket at all. And when the playoffs came around, did we see that switch at least a little bit to see them? The percentages were exactly the same. I was gonna say, I exactly felt like Jason same. Tatum had a lot of games where he just started off slow, and then it took until the second half for him to really pick it up. And most of the time, it's because he's taking jump shots to start it off. I just think that they, they are so very talented that that's gonna be enough to carry them to mm -hmm. potentially win a championship. Hmm. Top six, top six are so talented. Yeah, I was I was looking at it too because I was thinking the same thing with Porzingis. Uh, he missed 14 games this season so far, <laughs> so about a quarter. Which I mean, it's kind of just been like knickknack here. Like mm -hmm. out here, he's out tonight. Uh, this night, and he's back tonight. So I think he should be okay. It's just they need him for the playoffs. Yeah, and I, I'm okay with him missing these games if that means that yeah, he's when April come, come around, playoffs, he's yeah. good. Yeah, because for them, they're not a December team. Right. They're a, March. Bro, no, they be April, winning without him. April and May, June. Team. <laughs> they be winning without him. But when he hoop, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. The next team is a, t uh, it's a team I don't have one for. They just it's the Clippers. <laughs> I mean, I was gonna try to figure out one. Can, but I got it one. It was a, okay. Let's hear it. I feel like this is an obvious one, but anytime we see James Harden on a new, t just regular season, James Harden is amazing. We know when the playoffs come, it always dips a little bit. Is this the season or postseason where we finally see? You know, he can be consistent. He can I, bring it. I, that was the one I was trying to write when I was over there. Mm -hmm. But it was like, is it the same? Because you have two extra I understand, guys. But even watching the Clippers now, they look the best when he's like, when he's kind of like the engine of it. You know what I'm saying? Like when he's in go mode, when he's attacking, when he can hit down his threes. That's the same thing with the Porzingis. They look unfuckwittable. You know, I did, the, I did my Hawk series. They won the championship. Mm -hmm. Finals MVP. Robert Probably. Covington. He definitely stole the trophy <laughs> on a losing team. Um, but Paul George. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I don't think his playoff woes, they might matter, but Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are just so damn good that it might be it, it might be able to be overlooked. Kawhi can Kawhi's single handling has shown us that he can win you a few playoff games and now when you have Paul George next to him, Ty Lue's an amazing coach. They also have Russell Westbrook backing him up. So it's like I think they have so much talent. Norman Powell's a bucket that is like, I think his playoff roles could be a little bit overlooked. All he has to do now is facilitate, play make, give me 17 points, and I think everything else could figure itself out. That's 17 sometimes hard in the playoffs. I know. He was getting about like 12. And then so, 40s. He got yeah, two 40s. I was going to say, don't forget <laughs> to 40, but in between is like 12. But that's because bad it was turnovers. Embiid. It's going to be bad turnovers. Yeah, it was just because it was just him and, yeah, and beating him. And Maxi was not who Maxi is now. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Being, but, being third fiddle is definitely going to benefit James Harden. Yeah. It won't be as much pressure on him to try to go out there and get 40. Yeah. So. I, I feel good about it. Even if he does have a bad series here, too, or game here, too. Kawhi and Paul. Like you mentioned, they have enough in yeah. most cases. Um, before you get to your next team. Uh, we need to hear a word from our sponsor. I love our sponsor. Yeah, they agree. 
Why should you bet with Caesars Sportsbook? Two words, Caesars Rewards. Every bet brings you closer to the type of benefits only Caesars can offer. Hotel stays, VIP experiences, sports and concert tickets, and more. It's not just an app, it's an empire. Yeah, James Harden's playoff success. This, whenever, is, this is the year. Whenever we go to break, Austin be like, water? Anybody want water? <laughs> hey, man. I think you messed up last episode. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. Because I was like, hmm, should I ask him to go get me a Baja Blast right now? Because I know he will. Dog. <laughs> whatever, whatever tea that was that you got me, I, I need the exact recipe. Because, I, man, you see how he always got his cup? Yeah. I might need one of those. Like, on a, on This is a, just from the, this from the coffee shop in here. I, I'm aware. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware, but they ain't got what he had got oh, me. No. And I was I was driving past the Starbucks a couple of days ago, and I was like, oh, I should go get that tea. But I'm like, I looked at the label. I'm like, Austin got some freaky stuff. I don't even know what I'm. I'm gonna get the wrong shit and piss myself off. Um, the next yeah. team is the Grizzlies. Okay, L- yeah. The loss. This lost season will be a blessing in disguise. No, cap or no cap? No cap. No cap. Um, I think that. It, it sucks, obviously, because um, these players are so good. Jaron Jackson, Desmond Bain, and John Morant. But the best thing about it is that they none of them have reached like their theoretical primes yet. So it's not like, like oh, my God, this is our last season together and this happened. Like These guys are destined to play together for a pretty long time. Yeah. And having a top five-ish pick wherever they end up landing, or it's probably, I think it's projected number eight right now, but maybe they jump up. Having another lottery pick that either you can use or to flip to something else is definitely a blessing, and then having them all together, as we've seen, when they are together and they are healthy, that is a dangerous team. And now we add another asset on top of it, blessing in disguise. It sucks in the moment because now Stephen Adams is off the team. That sucks. Yeah. But they'll look back and be like, oh, yeah, this was an important season for our history. Yeah, I think it's uh, – I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you for a very big reason. Why is that? If your team is currently struggling in this landscape, this team is going to come back and be back to themselves – and that made me look at y'all even crazier. Mm-hmm. But we'll get to y'all. They'll have Trey Young next season. <laughs> if they, end up, with, if they end up with Trey Young, <laughs> the state of Atlanta should protest against going to any Hawks games and make them lose a large margin of profit because there is nothing that the Lakers have. <laughs> that saying, will you allow don't want those three first round picks? Huh? You don't want those three first round picks? I need some. I feel talent. like you can get it from somewhere else, low key. But like, honestly, those three first round picks might be very valuable. Not if they got Trey Young. They, LeBron gonna go and it's gonna be Trey Young and Anthony Davis. It's the oh, Lakers. Yeah. They just gonna keep cycling yeah. through. Yeah, I forgot, um, I forgot keeps, about Trey Young's price still gonna be there. And with Anthony Davis, yeah. Never mind. I um, feel the same thing about with the Rockets too. They gonna they gonna get better next year. Mm-hmm. And it's only gonna be another team that's gonna be hard to beat. I'm gonna uh, say no cap for it though. Um, I think not yeah, only I putting out such a standard thing. I know everybody gonna say no cap. But. Yeah, yeah. Because not only what KB said about just like not them not being in their prime or whatever, but I think you also found those gems. Like you said, Vince Williams has been really good. Also got Gigi Jackson. So all that's that, I'm sorry. Did y'all see that Gigi Jackson stuff? About what? That he's been um, suspended by the team four times this year. Damn. No. No. Yeah. He got his bag though. He did. But there's been four disciplinary actions against Gigi Jackson so he's far. It's crazy that wasn't reported. He's a kid. None of those were reported. Uh, it it's was reported. Your, That's what not, I saw. It's none oh. of your business. It though. wasn't reported by Shams and Wolves, <laughs> yeah. but it was definitely reported. And let me, let me, I want to read you the exact thing that it said. And I'll finish what you were saying while I figure out this Gigi Jackson stuff. I think the, with the blessings in the skies, with having some of these guys just being able to go out there with the opportunity and not have to worry about that and like it's okay to lose games and everything like that. And just like a couple of years ago, this team is just going to come back, I feel like, stronger, and they're going to be one of them top five, top four scenes like we've seen before. Yeah, I mean, when, you, when your young talent is developing and they can just add to your depth and your star players are just, like, kind of healing or mm-hmm. Jaw was suspended, um, he's now healing as well now, but, like, everybody's now getting better. And I, I feel like, like that just does nothing but help you as a team get better. Mm-hmm. I like Taylor Jenkins as a coach a lot. Yeah, like I like his intensity. Feels like he's like a actual part. Like he feels like he's on the court. He seems like a type of coach you want to get up and play for, like uh-huh. nightly. That's my homie. Not all true. Y'all did take a picture together. He asked me. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Pee wee." I look back. It was even reported that, that he was out of shape during a workout, and he's 
stopped early and was found hitting a vape pen in the locker room <laughs> when a team official checked on him. <laughs> <laughs> that's insane. So that happened four times? Or, well, that's just one well, of the incidents. One of them. Um, hitting a vape pen during an NBA workout. Him and Mike could get along real well. <laughs> like would. it's 1970. I feel again. like, bro, when all you're smoking cigs. Well, how old is he, 19? Yeah. yeah. 19. I feel like that's like. You're getting into your like physical peak, you know what I'm saying? Like it's hard to be out of shape at 19. Nah, as no, an you athlete, physical, no, 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 no. As an athlete, you don't enter your prime until you're 26, 27. Yeah, yeah I'm with them. That's why physical peak amongst I'm regular talking, people is probably 19 because you're still in school. Or I'm you're talking just about the young school. legs, man. I'm talking but about the he that, don't no. got the years on him he, and all that. He, type his of stuff. body's only gonna get better. It is. No, I agree. I going into your body is definitely a thing. Because like when you look at like a guy like KD, he looks nothing like he did when he came into the league. Mm-hmm. For sure, he's he put more, on like seven, eight, eight pounds. Giannis, yeah, yeah Giannis. I just feel like when you're at that all, age, you can still eat that bag of hot chips and like, be up and down that court oh, like yeah, it no, ain't that's, nothing. That's, that's what that I'm more so. Not like he got the, he need to bulk up or something like that. But even he just hitting the vape pen in general. And during while hooping is crazy. He was fiending for the nicotine that bad. I did, that's it. why I despise that shit. I, yes. I cannot stand it. Yeah, I cannot stand it. Take it. control of him. Yeah. But people lose and they flip couches upside down. <laughs> yeah, I've seen people do that. Yeah, I didn't tore up my bed before. I've seen you tore up a studio. <laughs> I haven't <I> seen <laughs> you in a Obama crazy. jersey. I don't need no. no I don't you want, didn't. I did. I don't, saw want, I don't want nothing to have that much. If money don't control me, never nicotine. Not. Yeah. Because if you lost a dollar, you wouldn't have been flipping that shit upside down like that. I You'd have been like, man, that's just a dollar. Wouldn't he? Yeah. Would you have done it for a hundred dollar? A hundred dollar bill? I yeah, hope so Because he could buy Four vape pens with that. That's what he gonna say He gonna say Man that's four vape pens Damn <laughs> Every dollar matters It's a real thing You got a real bad problem If you start budgeting That way Yeah That's what he said I gotta put this hundred To the side Because I need four vapes That's what he said I need a blueberry we I ain't never say that We went in Toronto And I was like yeah, That's a decent fit We was shopping And doing that Mike said that was you. It's called Six Face. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never said nothing like that. Damn, no. <laughs> that just got y'all dead, huh? Kids, don't vape. Yeah. Uncle P say don't vape. And if I catch you vaping, I'm a, that's what I'm going to start doing. Y'all message me, hey, man, this, you said this on the pod. Go on your profile. If I see you vaping, I'm blocking you. And when I see you... You, you get, get discipline. Two to the chest. Two t- we call that chest ties. Yep. Hawks. Trey Young could realistically be dealt this offseason. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he came well, in with the drop can, the mic. I'm like, damn. I think it I think it's it's a legit thing, you know. Um But realistically, you I to the Lakers, probably not. But I don't think it's got to be to the Lakers. Gonna, what about the Spurs one? That's the one that I'm like. That's the one I want. That's mm-hmm. the one I, I want. Because you just see, we, I guess we're talking about Triple the Spurs. Triple-double with the blocks? Yes. <sighs> All right, we, actually, we, we're going to talk Spurs. Side. Man, Your boy Hassan Whiteside wish he could do what that man did last night. Your boy Hassan Whiteside, but we'll get to that too. <laughs> uh, uh, what, I'm sorry. What was the question? Nothing, because we talked about the Hawks. Okay, we, yeah, we, we talked heard, about we, the, they opened the show pretty much. Okay, yeah. shout out to the Atlanta Hawks. Um, the Heat, the Eastern Conference is too strong for another postseason run as a low seed. Cap or no cap? Oh, hey, clip me if you want to. Hit me back in June. No cap, man. It's, it's tough. It's going to be a tough. It was a tough road last year. I think it's a tougher road this year. For sure. No cap. It's it's hard to bet against them because they just did it as, an, as a play-in team yeah. last year. It's, it's okay to admit yeah. that was like that was like the best scenario possible pop. They scenario. They everyone wrong. It was a Cinderella yeah. run. And I mean, it was great. You know, it was fun to watch for. It was fun to watch Jimmy. It was fun to watch Caleb Mario. It was fun to watch all that. And honestly, especially with like Terry Rozier, you have Tyler Hero back. I think you might even have a be- like a better roster than you did going into last year. Yeah. But I agree, it's still too tough. Like you don't have enough for the Boston Celtics. You don't have enough for. You don't have enough for the Cavs. Like I mean, Eric Spoelstra might say differently. Yeah. I was That's listening to the, the point forward, and Iggy was talking about his time in Miami, and he was talking about how intricate their scouting room is for the playoffs and that is one of the successful reasons of, of why they've been just really good in the playoffs saying that like they go so much in detail where like when they were ha- they had Jason Tatum rules 
Whereas like when he put the ball on the floor and dribbled three times, and now we sending it sending a double because usually if you put the ball three times, he's trying to do this move. They just they see and recognize all of these tendencies, and that's, that's why they that's, defend so well in the playoffs. It's just crazy to think about. Yeah, I, I'm honestly surprised more teams don't do that. And I think we've seen a lot of like great defenders. I remember uh, who was it? Yeah, Meta, Meta World Peace up here talking about like. How important it is to just know your opponent's habits and everything like that and how much you can take advantage of them and, you know, you can find success out of that. I think uh, Patrick Beverly has talked yes. about being one of those people that loves the film room because they let, like, that's a real thing. J.J. Now. Redder just spoke about it in his interview with Luca. He was yep. talking about how he went to a game, um, the Grizzlies versus Knicks, and um, he heard Thibodeau say something like, Seven keep, seven keep, yeah, and it's Split obviously Jalen Brunson keeping the ball, and he was like, he couldn't believe the Grizzlies didn't pick up on that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, he like, if I heard it, I know they heard it. You yeah. know, so and now that he'd have, this was the one time I was like, okay, they're finally healthy. Jimmy is away because of some personal reasons. Yes. He had a death in the family, and then in their game on Super Bowl day, because nobody cared about the basketball. Uh, Terry Rozier got injured and Josh Richardson got injured. Yes. So it's like they were finally. Luckily, Terry Rozier to get avoided any significant injuries. But they say he was week to week, right? Yeah. And then um, dislocated shoulder for Josh Richardson. So like when we thought they were about to get healthy and maybe go on a little run, they're not. Um, and it's just it's the same thing as last year. That's why I'm kind of hesitant because last year they also had the most time missed to injuries. Where like they never had all their guys together, and then the playoffs hit, boom, they had all the guys other than Tyler Hero, and then they won. I'm fearful that that might be the case too to like answer your question but again I'm just gonna go with my gut and say that you're catching lightning in the bottle two times is tough so I'm gonna say um, it's not happening what what would be their dream first round matchup in order for them to make the run it would have to be like a Philly hope let's assume in that Joel Embiid is not back that you could do all of the scouting in the world against Tyrese Maxey they upset the Cavs a Celtics or Knicks right now they're the eighth seed so they'd be in they a playing game. Oof. Yeah. Oof. And they would have to play, play the, the Pacers. All the Pacers. They would have to play oh, yeah, the Pacers. Seven, eight, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if they win it, they keep, keep seven. Which is the Cavs. Cleveland. If they lose and they win, they would go against the Celtics. Cleveland probably don't want to see them in a seven. No. No, I don't no. think any team wants. I feel like they're uh, I always say like the, the same Celtics, as the Lakers. The, the it's Celtics. just like none and of the top seeds want to see yeah, the, the Celtics heat. don't want to see them either. I don't, I, think, I don't think the all. Celtics as worried. This They're not worried, but it's just I, I'd rather the go Cavs against so many the, other teams. The Cavs the and the Celtics. Yeah. Who you yeah. think is more worried? The Cavs, but I think the Celtics. Uh, did, that's all you. You just answered my question, okay. sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> you just answered my question, sweetheart. So y'all think that those two teams, the two teams, whatever two teams end up being, because the Cavs have how much of a leap? Like two games between them and the three seed? No, one game. One game. Okay. All right, and the three three seed is who? The Bucks. The Bucks. Okay, so let's just say all three of them because we don't know how it will check out. We're pretty confident that the Celtics gonna keep. And and then let's say Cavs and Bucks are fighting for number two. Do you think they'd rather see the Pacers in this series? Like, do the Ooh. Pacers put any fear in in like opposing not like top the heat. seat? Not like the Heat. Not like the yeah. Heat. No. I was gonna say Tyrese Halliburton has been on this stuff, but Jimmy Butler, we already know he is a playoff riser. Like that's what he's gonna do. Yeah, and it, like you said, the scouting. They they know every team's tendencies. Mm-hmm. And that zone that they randomly throw at you always mess teams up. Yeah. They got so, the most important thing when it comes to the playoffs. So they got experience. The cat, I mean, the Heat have been to conference finals, NBA finals, finals twice yeah. now with this core of Bam, Jimmy, Tyler, Hero, D- Duncan Robinson. Like they, they've been through it all. They, they have an Im- immense amount of continuity. Chicago, yeah, that's continuity. That's when you need continuity when you're good. <laughs> um, the Hornets having oh Lamelo ball injuries are becoming more and more concerning. The reason I'm putting this out here is just because we know his brother stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. These are like lower body ankle injury, you know, we know the BBB shoe circulation thing. Are y'all starting to get concerned with LaMelo's injuries kind of stockpiling? Uh, a little bit. Um, so, But more so, he's young. So like, I think at the beginning phases, you can kind of like, you can go through these little injury phases. I just think it hinders the development of the team and him as well. Because like LaMelo's like an all-NBA type talent um, card. Like he could be that good when he's at his peak. Um, so it's just unfortunate to see that this team, when they do have him, how good they are versus when they don't have him. And it's just like, damn, the mellow's really needed. So it mm-hmm. is a little worry- worrisome just because you, you need your top point guard. Your yeah, ace. Yeah. I wouldn't worry too much about it. I would get my people, if if I was LaMelo, I would get my people to talk to Trey Young and like Steph Curry people because I know 
they're really big on like the ankle braces because they always been through going through like ankle injuries, especially yep. as like small guards that like to jump and all that type of stuff. So I, I don't know. I feel like it's more so something he can improve on. It's also freak accidents when it's like your ankle. But we've seen players kind of go through this and get better. Yeah, I'm not as worried. It's not like we competing for nothing anyway. Yeah. But how they going to compete if he's not there? You're right. But since the trade deadline. They had to have a look. They Grant Williams. Grant, Grant Williams. Hey, it's shots. about playing for the team that's on crossroads <laughs> chest and not the name on the back. That's why. Sharing the basketball is important. <laughs> Didn't you say Seth Curry said something like that yesterday too? They was trying to get him to say something of that nature, and I think he just he. Usually, when you go to a team, it's just like I feel like the generic thing is like we're playing for one another and all that type of stuff. But when it comes from the like you're just coming from the Mavericks, and Grant Williams just said that it's gonna sound bad. But he was more so happy that like he gets to play for the Hornets. Like you know, obviously his dad, his dad did, yeah. and his dad's on commentator, so I, it was cool to see. But I think the Grant Williams one was worse. Can't lie. Two games, they've been fun in those two. I understand what he mean though. Yeah, I mean, hey, you know what? I the was biggest, also, the biggest guy has been um, can't pronounce his last um, message. Mm-hmm. Oh, message. Oh, yeah, you know what? Sixteen and nine. When I seen that yeah. quote, you know what came to mind? P. We used to talk about pass first ball hogs, man. They a real thing. Pass first ball. Hogs. <laughs> <laughs> when you look at though, you could do that though. Pass first ball. Hogs, you end up man. with seventy. Um, uh, I should put that in the Urban Dictionary. They, 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 they. Damn it! I was about who, to say something. Who was I talking about when I first invented this? CP, <laughs> the greatest ever do it. <laughs> I remember, bro, when they, when he was with the Clippers, and all they did was try different wings to bring in. Matt Barnes, Grant Paul Hill, Pierce. Paul Pierce. I remember like Chris Douglas, and Roberts, this before I was Wesley really even Johnson. like deep diving into basketball. Jared Dudley. They would just run like. Um, what's it called? Like motions and down screens all day for shooters just to get open for like JJ Reddick, and it'd be Chris Paul at the top pounding that ball to somebody just get open. I'm like, man, go right down the I defense. I missed those. You had Blake That's Griffin set so the screen come offense, up, yeah. leave like him for alone. Floppy, and then he can he Blake right right can now. slip for the. Who would y'all ready to play? He's 49 for as a role player, prime Luca or prime Chris Paul. I'm not playing for either. I'm playing with them. Well, yeah, with them. Who would you play with? <laughs> Uh, give well. Um, what, 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 what position am I? What, what, what type of player is am it? I? Me? It's literally me. You're a role player. You're so, but either, it's but it's my skill the, set. You're a three and D. Let's say a three and D guy, or I'd rather or you would rather be the lob threat. Both of them need. Both if I'm players. being a lob threat, I want to play with Chris Paul. <laughs> if I'm a lob threat, Tyson Chandler. Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, I'm playing with Chris Paul. Oh, no. Daniel Gavin had the best games of I his was career. Say, they <laughs> both get those lobs out this world, yeah, bro. The first pass what that Daniel Gavin. What Luka has played with that turned into an all-star? Because DeAndre Jordan was not ever even looked at that, to that light. But he's had some uh, people that's really not, shouldn't even be close to all-star, like looking pretty damn good. It's not to take away from Luka. It's just that I've seen nah, what Chris yeah. Paul do. If I'm 3 and D, I want to play with Chris Paul. I'd rather play with Luca. If I'm I'm the opposite. If I'm a lob that Chris Paul, three and D Luca. I want to be Dorian Finney Smith. Mm. You don't you don't turn me into Dorian Finney Smith. Or would you rather be like a Jalen Brunson? So they can not pay me? True. You said a role player, three and D or a lob. Well Jalen Brunson when he was with Luca was a He was a role player, but yeah. he wasn't three and D. No, I'm saying or would you I was just switching up a little bit. Oh, I'm I'm wanna be Jalen Brunson any day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah for I sure. got a bag coming in a month. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jalen Brunson. Um oh, what I wanted to say is that I was watching their game last night, um, and I was listening to the, the Hornets broadcast, and Seth Curry checked in for the first time, and Eric Collins was like, Are you good, Dale? He's like, Yeah. I just still got to get used to seeing one of my, my boy wear my jersey, oh, you know. And I was like, yeah. "Oh, that's probably that's a really cool. cool, wholesome moment for him." For sure, for sure. Yeah, that's what was on my mind. Utah Jazz, like the Clippers, hard for me to come up with one. Mm-hmm. Somebody cook some. Uh, the uh, easy uh, thing is, man, are they gonna trade Larry Marketing? They're not. Larry, I want Larry Marketing to spend the rest of his career in Utah. Oh, mm-hmm. I just want Danny Ainge to build a team around him. And this is what year number two of them trying to do that. It, it, well, it, uh, it'll get done. It'll get and, done. And my my rebuild kind of real life. He ain't stay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just they like they're trying to be good. I, it's like you know they have Laurie, and then that's such that's such a good starting point or a point. I just think that they don't really know their like which direction they want to go yet. They have a lot of young players, but I feel like they're not in love with anything. Except for Laurie, yeah, I think Laurie and Walker <laughs> Kessler are like the two guys. The, that I think they still be in like, trade rumors, or, or like they be still talking about like we're open to trade to him. But you have to trade one of your untouchables in order to get Laurie Market. 
I think I don't. Even, I don't think that's Danny Ainge. I think that's just people saying like, "Hey, Larry Marketing is so valued to the Jazz that it's going to take seven first round picks," which we know is not going to happen. So it's just like, it's fluff for people to talk about. Like nobody's traded seven first round picks. Even even the biggest trades in the history of this game is five and some swaps. You yeah. know, nobody's given seven. Um, what is a good one for the Utah Jazz, though, man? Will they regret trading Simone Fontecchio? Because he went into um, Staples Center and had a goddamn night against the Clippers a few days ago. They lost, obviously, but yeah, they're just so weird. I don't know. If they I are anything. super weird, bro. I have no, no they're idea. like in that weird area too, where they're not like bottom feeders, but they're also decent. Is Keontae George better with his hair down or his hair up? Hair up. That is factually true. Hair up. You got the stats behind it. I do. Or you seen well, I've it? seen the stats behind <laughs> it. Well, it was like night and day. No, oh. <laughs> no, it wasn't. But it was better. Mm-hmm. And. Smartly better is better. They had the same thing with uh, with AD when he has the fro up versus when he had his hair, uh, like he has braids or whatever. Mm. And with the fro, his numbers were a lot better. That makes more sense to track because he's Anthony Davis. Yeah. yeah. Who? Why did somebody track <laughs> Keontae George's hair? I don't hair? know. I'm gonna he's got to be a jazz Alfred fan. Alfred Payton's shooting got better when he cut his hair. Yes, yes which made all the sense in the world. Because yes, he literally did. couldn't see. Yeah. I don't even know how he played basketball almost a lot of his life like that. Poorly. <laughs> <laughs> Not if he was a lottery pick. Yeah, well, he made it to the league. How we talk about the league? <laughs> what was I remember lot? the free throw line. He hit his hair while shooting a free throw. What well, was, was, com- well, was, was compared moment. to Rondo? Yeah, I was high on him because of that. Darren Fox made all star when he cut his hair. He sure did. So was, you get superpowers. Even though I like his hair because it's kind of like Super Saiyan. Yeah. Derek Dar- Dar- White also, almost made an all star game. He went bald. Come it on, It's crazy opening the NBA up and the he got a game with Jimmy Butler's pictures up there. Yeah. It is it's so fun. Maybe man. that's the last arc for KD. He cut his hair. Ah. Uh, and then he get, no, he get I even better. I, I wouldn't count on it. I'm not going to lie. Jimmy makes me kind of look forward to media day again because I want to see what his new no. hair now, now I want to know his corny. new hairstyle. That shit is corny. He's going he's gonna to wear he's gonna wear a big ass fro and it's going to be dyed. He should, no. do, he should cut it. Go bald. If you really bought that life, go bald. <laughs> it's hard to convince somebody to go bald when they don't need to. Yeah, like for usually real. if you going bald, it's because nature's saying it's time. Dwayne Wade went bald; he ain't need to. Who else went bald when they didn't need to? God, it's more people. Kobe, Ocho Cinco, swear he went bald, but he ain't need to. The Kings, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they still one piece away, cap or no cap? Yeah, no cap. Yeah. I, I no couldn't cap. really cook yeah, with are. them, so I, I just threw this out there. But I think that one piece is developing still. I think it's Keegan Murray. I think mm-hmm. once Keegan Murray starts to really put it all together, I think he is that missing piece. So. Uh, his um, ISO defense numbers were floating around Twitter, and he's like best in the league in points per possession with guard and isolation. And obviously he's guarding like the best players Steph in the league. Curry. Like he's got the tough assignment, which is cool. Like I saw that, and then it was like Rudy Gobert is number six. I'm like – his matchup difficulty as far as isolations go, are, he's not guarding Lucas. He's not guarding Kyrie's. He's guarding other centers trying to iso. Of course, his does points that include purpose, switches in the pick and roll? It does. Yeah, it does. But it's not like he's switching so regularly that he's guarding Lucas 12 times Remember when we looked at pick and roll numbers and he was like, there's no way this shit. What are they counting? It's pick and roll. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think, let me see if I can but find that. But I think exercise. Rudy being six while also having a switch on the guards, it's still very impressive. No, it's impressive, yeah. but it's just not as impressive as... Because he's saying, yeah, you're, they're dumping it into Nicholas Claxon last second, like, go crazy. <laughs> and that's counting as isolation. <laughs> and isolation yeah. Man, so you know, I'm going to put... I'm, what is OG number two? I'm, I'm trying to find the exact numbers again. It was from yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. That That's so hard to do, bro. To guard in an isolation type situation, mm-hmm. and you know it's just you and that man, and you, that's hard to do. Would you rather guard the isolation or through the screen? Ooh. I'm probably doing isolation, honestly. Which I would hate to have to chase certain people. Like, if you ask me to chase J.J. Reddick all game, that sounds exhausting. Yeah, I, times, 100%. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> I got one for you. Would you rather be Damn. Would you rather be in isolation guarding to get the stop or having the ball to get the bucket? Having, having the, the ball, ball to, to get the, the bucket. bucket. Because I know what I'm going to do before the de- – like, the, you know what I'm saying? Like, I have the advantage as an offensive player. You think you do until so you get your ass locked up. The game is on the line, <laughs> You remember uh, yeah, it's that clip like, where it said uh, I'm James Harden got that foul on the three, and he's like, all I see is James Harden could have get past Trey Young in that ISO. Yeah. I yeah. Don't talk to me about fouling on the three. Wow. Because of oh, the yeah. <laughs> I didn't even say nothing to you when you had joined the Discord, but me and KB was watching that shit, like, as it happened, I was just like, that – 
That was just a bad way to end the game. Bro. I was I tweeted that and that you was such a questionable funnier? call to me. <laughs> and then they, they came out and said is, like it's yeah. the wrong call already. So that referee is stupid. They bail. That's what we that's what we saying. Am I right or am I wrong? You're right. He was. <laughs> Why you say that so scared? You right, bro. Before, it was like a couple minutes left in the game, and they said they had put up a stat. It said like most points for the team in clutch time. Sengun was at the top of like seventy eight or whatever. Then it was like Freddie. Then it said Jalen Green and Jabari will had like twenty one and eighteen. Yeah. So I was just I already know it just means that like when it when it comes down to it, when the game's on the line, Sengun or Fred. It's Sengun or and it's Fred. It's kind of crazy. And that Fred didn't play. <laughs> Jalen Green caught that ball immediately. Had no. He tried to get that move on the baseline. Had nowhere to go and just threw it out with one Why second left. Why was he kind of open? I don't know. Yeah, I'm like, I don't what the know. hell are the Knicks doing? It's kind of crazy that. The Knicks got that stop on Shingun, but then it ended in a wedge. And so they yes, had to do the yes. jump ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they played great defense. Yeah. Just to just have to fight for it again. That game and should then have been Aaron Holiday, he literally just threw that. Threw that ball. He just up, threw bro. it up, bro. bro I said he like, didn't even shoot he it. He, he threw, threw it threw like it a baseball. Yes. He threw it <laughs> when I see him throw that ball. And as a referee, <laughs> if I see a guy just why would I make? Why would I give? Then that they call? try to do too much talking about we gonna see if there's still time on the clock for the for point, the next to get up. Two, three seconds <laughs> left. Like, bro, no. you couldn't even do nothing in point. That years. man did not foul him, bro. Even yeah. if he would have caught it a shot, he um, went up. Here, here are the best ISO defenders by points per possession given up: Keegan Murray at one, Max Struess at two, Kevin Durant at three, Jalen Johnson, Rudy Gobert at five, Anthony Davis at six, Larry Market at seven, Nikola Vucevic and Yaka Kongo, Luka Doncic at ten, and um, that list seems very. This is now this is them the ordinary compared to matchup difficulty according to B Ball Index. Keegan Murray's matchup difficulty is an A minus. So that's okay. why that stands above everything. Okay. He's number one and he's guarding the best players. Jalen Johnson's a B minus, Anthony Davis C minus, Kevin Durant C minus, Rudy Gobert D minus. Then you got Luka, Vucevic, and Yeka Kong will all have F matchups. So it's like oh, okay. you doing it on like the Monte stationary yeah, yeah. shooters. Well, that's that's what, and that first one you said Max Schuess, right? Max Schuess is on this list. Oh my. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm, I'm Troy Brown Jr. Yeah. Isolation, Luca, like I got. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That first game against the uh, Thunder, he had Lou Dort. Yeah, there was like three possessions in the well, first he half where he thing. really clamped up defensively against Lou Dort. You're like, okay, and that's the match. Well, you know, I want to see Luca hold his own. Here. Yeah, he was excited against Lou Dort. Yeah, he was excited about <laughs> yeah. that first game. I agree with you. Um, but yeah, I'm, like I'm surprised not to see like Cruz on that list or like OG and. Mm-hmm. Where they have, it's, I think it's tough to keep your points per possession down when you're guarding superstars yes, every yeah, night. It's just tough. You, I mean, Kevin Durant's going to get a bucket regardless if you play de- good defense or not. Well, I thought they was talking about Kevin Durant as a def- defender, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's still – at least he's still defending. Sure is. Mm, got no choice. Jalen Brunson is more than capable as the number one guy, cap or no cap, for the Knicks. Uh, uh, no, no cap. And we talking yeah. about playoff shit, too. I'm going to say no, no cap. cap. Um, mm-hmm. Traditionally, I would probably say cap. But because of how complete the team is, this is a no cap for me. We got to get healthy. Yeah. Yeah, no cap. Just because I, I just like the whole team. Um, the Like the whole roster now feels like it's completely complete. Like it did feel like they were missing a piece at the beginning. And it seemed like I would have said cap a few months ago. And mm-hmm. been like they need a little bit more. But now with like the full complete roster, I think giving him this much talent, I think it's no cap now. Yeah, honestly, I, we were talking about pass for his ball hugs. Like I feel like I get the opposite from him. Like. He's one of the more unselfish stars that, like, he wants to get his team involved and everything like that. Like, he he's going to do his thing when the team is trying to lean on him. He's going to go out there and get 30, 40. But him having a complete team, he likes playing that unselfish ball. So I like that. Yeah, I think, I think just, it, they can do it. He's so damn good when, like, it seems like he knows when to take over the game. Yeah. And he's such a good game manager at the same time. Like, he knows when to facilitate, when to score. He posts up. He attacks in a pick and roll. He does so much on the basketball court that – he he's just like a true number one that you want to have on your team. LeBron's future weighs. LeBron's future with the Lakers weighs heavily on this postseason. Cap or no cap? That's no cap. I I I think LeBron's damn near like one foot out the door. Damn, Ooh, it feels like it. Oof. Oof. I thought this was a stupid like, question for me. Mm. LeBron throughout his career enjoys winning. Mm. Right now, <laughs> his team is not winning, and he seems to set up his contracts beautifully. I don't know how. I don't know how his contracts end up perfect every time. Shout out to Rich Paul. Where he's, he has his option to opt out or opt in. And depending on the, how the team is going, I think he might opt out if they don't do anything. I don't think he's opting out. And I also think he will opt out to apply pressure to the Lakers to add more to this damn roster. 
I don't, that's only so much they could do. I don't think he'll <laughs> opt out because the money he's opting out of is fifty two to three million dollars. No other team could get that unless they're gutting their team to do that. And if you're LeBron, if X team guts their team for me, then I'm not in content. I'm in the same spot. So I think he opts in, but say like, bro, I'm I'm ready, you know. But also. LeBron's made so much money throughout his career that it's, he, I know it's 50 I hear you suggest that no player has really been like I'm I'm turning down 53 million. LeBron is not like I will take 10 million so we can be better. That's just not who he has oh, been. Oh no, not 10 million. But because I think anything he, less than any if he goes to 30 million that still doesn't leave enough cap to do anything. They're already over. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That man's a known billionaire. I I think he What what's what's more important than 1 billion? 2. 2. 2. Who said that? I don't know. Oh, it's man. like it's <laughs> Look how Austin looking at you. He no. He no. Every, everybody, I, like, I understand the idea behind it. It's just not realistic in the NBA. It's mm-hmm. just no, nobody has really done it. The best thing we got was James Harden taking $12 million less than what he was expected and see how that turned out. You know what I'm saying? It's just LeBron is going to want money regardless if you're a billionaire. The Philadelphia 76 is going to have $60-some million dollars in cap. Yeah. Same with the Detroit Pistons. Don't play with it. Why would you <laughs> <laughs> no. That would be Ooh, the Maxie, ultimate thing to his legs. Did he go to the Pistons Bron? to get them a championship? Hey, get yeah. them, you can't even get, get them the to the playoffs. Bro. Campaign? Try to get close, this team to the closer to New York? Even he even he don't want to play that? So he like dead into that now? The I, Anthony I, Melton? You're not going to convince me that that's the right move to me. <laughs> just, Kelly Oubre? Well, that might be the reason. Now he's on the minimum. He's going to want some money. He's been playing phenomenal this he season. The Anthony Mount is also expiring. Or yeah. get well soon, Anthony. It's been two months. Go back with Spo and Pat Riley. Right, what's his calf? How, you say that, but like, how do they do They'll it? They'll figure it out a way. Oh, now you just in team, fantasy land. Any team that wants LeBron James, they will find a way. If you are, if you are LeBron James, yeah. which you close to, and then he say, oh, we can bring you in, but we got to trade Bam to do it. Are you even interested anymore? I don't think that he – I mean, no, I'm not. That's what I'm saying. Do you think they're going to – I'm just, I'm just I'm just saying yeah. hypothetically because mm-hmm. you got to Jamie's making a max. Yeah. Tyler Hero's on thirty something million. Bam That's is on thirty something say. million. Tyler Hero's probably going to be out. The They're going to say get your ass on. Terry Rozier's on eighteen million. See you later. So Terry Rozier, Tyler Hero, and what and Duncan, Duncan Robinson, Robinson all have to go. So yeah. it's just us three. I'm just and joking because you need Duncan Robinson for LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> so he can turn to Cal Cool. <laughs> the Magic. I don't have one for them. Help me cook. Um, I think. The beginning of this season, it kind of teased their fans, and I feel like that's still kind of setting in. Like they're they're a really good team, don't get me wrong, but they're just still not there yet, which is okay for a team that has you know two young guys that are really good, a very nice roster kind of fits them, and that's gonna get improved. Like I think you should be in a good spot. You shouldn't have to like think we kind of fell off a little bit because we're not that top three, top two seed no more. I think the cap and no cap should be should they be ultra aggressive mm-hmm. in off season, inquiring. A guard like who? I I don't know. Uh, let, uh, hypothetically, tra- we're gonna mention Trey Young for the thousand time. Hypothetically, Trey Young is available. Yeah. We got to outbid. Are the you Lakers. willing to get Franz Wagner up? For no, Trae Young? hell no. Hell no. <laughs> but okay. we have all of our first round picks, and we also have Anthony Black, Anthony Black, and Jet Howard as young players that I, you might yeah. be interested in. Wendell, <laughs> sure. What's the status on Tyus Jones? Risk he's, a, he's gonna be a free agent. That might be their point guard. Might be. I wouldn't be mad at that. But he's he feels like a bridge point guard more than anything. Like if yeah. I if I'm the Orlando Magic, which I'm not in this position, I I want to like kind of build yeah. the real core. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anthony Simons. I want Anthony is, Simons. I, I want Trey Young. Anthony Simons would be crazy. I want Kobe player. White. Too yeah, too Kobe bad. White. <laughs> Another <laughs> trade with the Magic trade. where the well, you know the Magic tra- get the the it's, better player. <laughs> it's the, it's the Bulls. They're not trading nobody. Don't matter. You can offer Franz and Paolo. They'd be like. Mm. We'll think about it. <laughs> uh, I think yeah, I think their capital cap should be that because I've also read some um, some blogs of Magic fans of like trying to figure out what the next move is for their guard, and they're not again. I'm talking about one author or writer talking about it. He wasn't really interested in potentially going all in on a guard. Again, we don't know who that guard could potentially yeah. be, but he would rather do like a bridge thing where somebody that's objectively better than a Markel Fultz, Anthony Black backcourt, and say, hey. He's, he can bridge while we have Paolo be better and Franz be better. But my my alternative to that is that you're going to have to pay those players just relatively soon. So I want somebody on my books right now because that's the only way we can really have it so that we can max right. Paolo and we're going to have to max Franz. Yeah. That's the only way we can They're already my players, so I team. can max them. Yeah. 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 I, but luckily for them, Anthony Black is still 
he could develop potentially to your starting point guard maybe. Yeah, I just – I think that there's – um, and obviously I could be wrong. When I watch him play, there feels like a – a ceiling on him as a creator himself. Yeah, no, I could see that. Um, that's, but maybe that's the I mean, part he, of his game. That's the develop. downside of the jumbo guards, the Giddies, Anthony Blacks. There was somebody, Dyson Daniels. It's like. But they also have like, for all those people, like obviously Shea, you can't really take the ball out of his hand. Paolo and Franz, they've been doing all the playmaking really. I mean, obviously Jalen Suggs, Cole Anthony will get in there, but like. All those teams, they really got their playmakers already. You know, Brandon Ingram and Zion, they got the ball. So you have you have yeah. to be elite to take that shit away. And if yeah. you're not elite, then mm-hmm. would you would you know? I mean, you got to get in where you fit in, and in those cases, mostly you got to sit down in that chair and you got to be able to knock down some shots or have some offensive capability. It's not going to be a lot of guards available this yeah. off season. Now that I'm looking at it, it's going to be tough to find them. When I watch the Magic, Paolo is going to be a very good defender in this league. Um, He's very good with his feet. He's quick. He can guard multiple positions. And I just think he's going to be a very good help defender, too. Like, he's going to be very good at protecting the rim. I think he's going to be a very versatile defender in the future. We saw some of that during the Olympics, like that yeah. first game when he was playing that small ball five. Like, oh, snap. You know what I just noticed? What? Why is your mic so much lower than the rest of ours? Cause Not saying that you got to change it, but it's just I'd never really paid attention. It's just because the way his mic is. The same way y'all mics were messed up, ours is now messed up. Uh, I don't know how. I told you Austin was touching me. <laughs> Austin was here the other day on the off day. There we go. Yep. He definitely was in the office. He kicking and watching Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know how, but all both pairs of mics were just in different <laughs> places. Definitely, it was going to be able to <laughs> gonna be hearing stomach growling during the podcast. <laughs> And you know his stomach don't just growl. Let's talk to you. Chicken sandwich. <laughs> Can we get your pole after this? <laughs> like, damn, what was that? Oh, that's my stomach. <laughs> um, what's the name? Uh, does Luke? No. Lou, uh, the how do I want to word this? The Mavericks now have enough <laughs> for another run. <laughs> They after do. this post trade, after this post, they're on a five game winning streak right they now. They do, but look, unfortunately for them, the other teams above them are still playing very Nobody's good. Nobody's slowing so down. So like, they're yeah. on a five game win streak, but they're literally still just in the deep seat, yeah, and with no progress to good and higher. <laughs> um, I've liked these two games. Since yes, the deadline. for sure. Um, yesterday was wasn't pretty. Um, it was against a really bad game. team. I'm glad. Yes. I'm glad to say that for you because you was a little optimistic on when we did this. Um, and also for me, I want to go. The two games I saw of Daniel Gafford starting, I had said over he should, lively when I, he's healthy. Yeah, I had said he should come off the bench. I think Daniel Gafford's the more NBA ready guy. Obviously, he's been in the league longer, so he's more NBA. Give me lively boy. But I think you should still let the more NBA ready guy start. Let lively do slowly get in there. Don't take that away from lively. I uh, I'm not there just yet. Um, one thing that I think lively has above Gafford is his short role playmaking. Gafford has. None of that right now. Yeah. Um, and I think that's kind of important because people going to know that you're going to spam pick and rolls with Luka Doncic in the lob threat. And that, that weak side is going to be open a lot. And I've seen a lot of great passes from Derek Lively so far this season where he swings it over to a THJ or somebody that's sitting in that mm-hmm. corner. The most exciting thing so far about this trade deadline, and it's only been in like 30 minutes, um, the the Maxi Kleber and P.J. Washington minutes have been blowing Maxie the doors off the teams. Maxie's been looking good, yeah. It's, if Maxie's been back for like like five, or maybe this is five-game win streak. He had the toe injury early in the season. He was looking awful. Since he's he been was. healthy, he's looked phenomenal. And the minutes with him at the five has been pretty cool. And I think Jason Kidd got some real decisions because Lively will be back. Obviously, Gafford is playing really well. Mm-hmm. But I do believe that Maxie, when he's playing the five alongside P.J. Washington, is something they should go to a lot. So how do you balance three yeah. good center options, especially, especially since Maxie's Maxi looking space, good? Uh, yeah, I, I think we were talking about it because they went against the Wizards. So yes, it's right, like you're right. supposed to win that game. And I think it was Tyus Jones who got to the paint. And he got like he tried to attempt a layup. And for the first time, I was like, man, the Mavericks just contested the hell out of that shot. It was Josh Jackson down there. It was um, Josh Green. Josh, I don't know why I said Josh Jackson. Josh Green down there, Maxi Kleber, and P.J. Washington all contested it. And I was like, they kind of got some help on that back end. And, yeah, I agree. Maxi Kleber can go out there and stretch the floor, too, along with P.J. Washington. You know, so I, I like that. I like that a lot. It's been, I don't know, man, it's been fun. That first game against OKC was eye-opener. 
is a matinee game, and I guess oh, somebody showed us that. Okay, see, a matinee games have been awful for thirty years or something stupid like that. They young, they go out. Um, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, and that first quarter, man, that was one of the most fun first quarters as a neutral fan I can remember. I think the Dallas Mavericks are one of those teams that for neutral fans or even like casual fans who probably just get into the game. The Mavericks are one of those teams that will like lock you in, mm -hmm. and you will probably become a fan of them just because of how Luca and Kyrie plays. It was like um, Daniel Gafford checked in first play. Luca throws it from half court, just throw mm -hmm. it up to him. Yes, and then they show they show Luca running back, and he's his smile. He did something like that. PJ had, Washington bro, too. They he had, a lot of yes. I think it was the one to PJ uh, Washington. He had one where he just like threw it up there. Yes, it didn't look like he lobbed it. It didn't look like he put no touch on it. He just threw it up there and it ended up in the bucket. I'm like, bro, they he can was do just that testing all. to see what he yeah. can and can't get he, away he with. He's yeah. trying to see what their catch radius is. Yes. And Luca has said for some time, well, it was reported that Luca has said that for the last couple of years, he's really wanted a backup center that's also a lob threat. He mm. wanted to whatever, like have well, Rashawn Holmes was not that. No. And Rashawn Holmes had a solid game last night 10.6 rebounds. And for somebody that hasn't played in two years, it feels like. Um, but he finally got exactly what he wants. And um, when Dante Exum comes back, this team is even deeper. Like, I, I like the team, man. I forgot about I forgot Dante Don't was forget hurt. about Dante I Exum. forgot Dante was hurt. Yes, yes man. Yes. yes. They got a lot of lineups. They've already been about. playing so damn good. You... Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know what they do. Josh Green back in that lineup has, has looked pretty solid. Good options is, is nice to have, especially in yeah, the playoffs. Especially you know, with a team that. Look, when you looked at their roster, it seemed like they lacked options. Yes. Now you're looking at it and you're saying they got some depth. These I are role players. And you know role players can be up and down, man. You might have a seven-game stretch, especially when it comes to playoffs. One series, Maxi may be on. The next series may be more favorable to Lively and Gafford. Josh Green may have a nice series here. Tim Hardaway Jr. shooting could slow down. It's good to have all of these different options. You want to hear something crazy? What? The game against OKC, Luka put up 32, nine assists, eight rebounds, right? That lowered his season averages. Yeah. That's how crazy he's been. That yeah. 32, 9, and 8 was – like, that lowered his averages. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And it's crazy because it maybe it's because I be, I be taking him on bets too much, but his stuff be like 10 <laughs> every time, and it's like, it's Luka Doncic. It's Luka Doncic, He's going to go – he's going to do that. Is yeah. he fully averaging a triple-double? No. <clears throat> no, 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 not averages, no. Um, that rebound, I think so far this year, let's see. Rebound's at 8.8. .8. Uh -oh. And I feel like it's yeah. always going to be like he's always going to be a, a good rebounder, not only because of his size, but it's just like he never really takes on somebody that's going to be running around screens or it's going to be ice on. Like he's he can chill around position. the basket. Yeah. He's not usually a help help uh, defense. I guess OKC they did a thing where if if Shea or J Dub attacked the basket, you helped off a of Lou Dort or Josh Giddy, mm -hmm. and pretty much if they kicked it out to him, just don't close out, mm -hmm. let him shoot it. And then, so everybody who had those matchups was pretty much just going right to the basket and just rebounding the ball. Gordon Hayward going to help that a lot. Yes. Um, now that Joel Embiid is out, Luka Doncic is number one in points per game, number three in assists per game. Shooting 38% people, from three. Most of those self-created. It's a season, man. Bro, it'd be disrespectful, man. Shoot threes look like. Imagine you, you, you in a real-life game. So I know he eventually gets some of them. But it is kind of crazy to think that the difficulty of shots he's shooting – but threes, shooting 38% is crazy. Yeah, I think, bro, I couldn't imagine you on the other team and this man has hit five, six threes in the quarter and he's laughing, smiling, having a good time. <laughs> you know, like that's got to make somebody mad. Like, I got to get I gotta man, get back at dude. got that old man game. Luca, do. Luca shoots 41%. Which I love. From yeah. Yeah. Won't catch a shoot. Won't catch a shoot. Yeah, see? About two a game. So Kyrie kick it to him like twice. Yeah. <laughs> Tim Hardaway Jr. got such a good job. Shoot six catch and shoot threes per game. How what is he shooting on? Who is that? Thirty eight percent. Thirty eight percent on catch and shoot. Yep. Okay. Who who do y'all think attempts the most? Uh, like the most that's catch dude from shoot? the wire. He don't know who this is. What has Darvin <laughs> Osama been Laden? Uh, I couldn't. The lighting was a little messed he up. He talking about who was this? Oh. Can y'all guess who averages the most catch and shoot threes in the year? Give me top five. Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson's number two at six point um, nine. Thirty eight percent. Buddy Hill, not in the top Steph five. Steph Curry, yes. Steph Curry, not in the top five. The most threes attempted, right? No, the catch, catch and shoot, shoot threes. Um, uh -huh. Duncan Robinson. Not in the top five. Um, the rest of these players have something in common. Porzingis. Not in the top five. I feel like they're all white guys. Oh, Sam Hauser. Not in the top five. Sam Morrell. Not in the top five. Damn. Luke Kennard. Not in the top five. <laughs> I thought that was. Guest starters. And oh. then, then one bench player, I guess. 
Y'all um, missing the number one guy. Larry Markin is the number one catcher. Duh. At seven point five, forty two percent on seven attempts Duh. per game. That is insane efficiency, Damn, Larry. Man, I'm mad at. So I'm guessing the rest of them are probably white. <laughs> <laughs> he said they all have something in common. Yes, that they they shoot. They could be shooters. Well, they all they have to be shooters, right? Keep guessing. Oh, we said <laughs> Duncan Robinson, right? You we said Duncan Robinson. I'm just saying, how many white? How many one white guys you got? <laughs> Kobe White. <laughs> no, <laughs> technically a white guy, but no. <laughs> uh, Malik Beasley. Nope. AJ Green. Nope. Starters. Think oh, he starters. Did start. He did say starters. Austin Reeves. Nope. Oh yeah. Tyrese Maxey. Nope. I'm surprised it's Tyrese. Come on, y'all. They do have something in common. <laughs> they definitely all white. <laughs> Name some white guys there. It's two starters, one six oh, man of the year. Oh, Grayson Allen. No. What? Um, that's a good guess, Max though. That's a good guess. What? Max Struess. <laughs> Max Struess is number four. That's a good one, too. 35% right, so on they six are attempts. White. All right, let's think hard. <laughs> that's actually crazy. That Grayson Kevin Allen. Herter. Nope, Kevin Herter. Ah, that would have been a good one. Yeah, Grayson Allen's surprisingly not here, considering how good of a season he's having. What about Keegan Murray? Keegan Murray's he's number not. seven. He also is in white. Oh, I just guessed a white guy, so I'm like, is this is it is it white guys? Oh my god. <coughs> Come on. Who is on the Y'all Hawks? gonna be upset about one of these if y'all ain't say it. He's having a phenomenal season. Forty one percent on catch and shoot threes. And um the starter. Yeah, he's a starter. I, I guess he didn't start the season as a starter, but he is a starter. Signed for a little bit less in the middle of exception this offseason with a team. And he's mm. white. One of the best acquisitions. Well, some people might say he's not. Oh, oh, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Why is that they, clue they, enough? Yeah, no, they, <laughs> they just gave him the biggest clue. It's right there. It's, it's on, on the, the tip of your tongue. tongue. Yeah. He was going to say it, and it's going to come out really Dante weird. Dante DiVincenzo. Dante yeah. DiVincenzo is number five, oh, man. 41 I had to look at the teams. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all forgetting one guy. This guy's not a starter, but he's a starter. Isaiah starter Joe. Starter quality. Nope. Isaiah um, Joe was coming to mind, but he wasn't no starter. And then uh, six man of the year candidate. This dude ain't that. Bo- oh, Boban. No, Bogdan 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 Bogdanovich. Bogdan Bogdanovich. Yeah. Boban. I don't know why. Boban Bogdanovich. I don't know why. They need a. They need one of those memes where it's like their faces confused. Uh, right. Fused yeah. together. Yeah. <laughs> those are the top ones. Yeah. I cannot believe how efficient Larry Marketing is at basketball. He's bro. really good. I, man, this num- that number just jumped off the page to me. Seven and a half attempts, forty-two percent. That's crazy. Sheesh. You know he. You know what's crazy about him too? He's a former bull. Mm-hmm. Former bulls be going crazy once they Man. leave. Do y'all want to hear my 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 best lineup I could put together if things were perfect with the bulls? What? Kobe White at the one. Ayo Desumo at the two. Franz Wagner at the three. Don't look. Ayo's been averaging twenty for like a uh, seventeen for like a month now. He's been phenomenal. Larry Marketing at the four. Gafford at the five. You didn't. You barely wanted this dude on the you, team. So who did you say at three? <laughs> Franz, Franz Wagner. You, Franz. No, that's not gonna happen. No, I'm just saying. But you like, said if it was a dream. Was yeah, perfect. yeah, yeah. And then off the bench, Zach a Levine. man could dream. Zach Levine off the bench. I ain't mad at that. That's Zach Levine not Levine's coming, coming off. Yeah, exactly. I, know, I was talking. Yeah. I just, I just went down on the start lineup. But yeah, that team. That's a playoff team. Not a great team. But it'll be a team that's fun to watch. The average age of that team is team is this twenty four and a half for the Bulls. My point guard is Lonzo Ball. My shooting guard is Zach Levine. My three is Franz. My mm-hmm. four is Larry. Then my five is Gaffer. Because me and you were saying Gaffer should be starting back in that day when they had them. Six years ago that. when he was not even close and, to uh, my <laughs> sixth man would be Kobe White. Kobe's too good. He's got to start. Sorry, Lonzo. <sighs> What's the next thing? He ain't got to start. <laughs> <laughs> can we can we cut down on Kobe White's minutes just a little bit so he 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 have he's leading the league in minutes per game. The Nets and every one of his jump shots is short now. They need to blow it up, cap or no cap. They have I'm a, tired of saying this shit, but I'm gonna keep saying it. Yeah, I mean they have a team full of good number twos and number threes, number four options. They have like a literally a they literally have a boatload of role players on their team. Is that that Kobe White hoodie? It, it is. is. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get a new one. The words on the back are kind of peeling. What is it supposed bit. to say on the back? Um, it costs $0 to be a good person. Oh. What a wholesome hoodie. 
Yeah. I love me some Kobe White. It's just like a blink from the front. Like you don't have yeah, no branding exactly. on the front. Exactly. I love that part of it. Yeah. But then I you like look a at the back blink. and then you're like, oh. You all message. you got you got like fifty shades of gray going on. <laughs> 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 Pat leather a little dark gray, then you get into the light gray. This is the lightest gray. This is a little darker tint. That's a little added. But he shade. switched out his watch. You see, he yeah, usually rock his gold joint. He got yeah, his he, he got, got the, the silver watch, today. Yeah. Fifty shades of gray. This is my first watch I ever got. Who make it? Can Okay. Oh. I, I just, you know, my mom bought it for me like two years before I even started. Yes, because you wore yeah. it. You like, yeah, my mom oh, yeah. it for Christmas, and we like, she did. You like, yeah, two years ago. We like, boy, you crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna go no cap though. I don't have a lot to say about the Nets. They're one of for those sure. teams that have fallen to like. I'm only gonna talk about you if something significant happens. Sorry, I agree. With they're not a very fun team to watch. Yeah, yeah, not at all. Yeah, I just, yeah, you don't, you have a bunch of role players on your team. But hey, That's Cam, Cam Johnson's jumped up 11 points per game from last year. He has been hoping Cam Johnson. Curious to see Cam Thomas's market though. Oh, did I say Cam Thomas? Or you Cam said Cam Johnson. Johnson. I meant no, to no. say Thomas. That's oh, what I did. Cam say. Johnson has been hooping though. But um, Nuggets, most reliable playoff team, and what I mean by reliable is like you feel the best about them still. No cap. Yeah. Even when they have nights like yesterday where they get dominated by Milwaukee Bucks team, I still have the utmost amount of confidence in them and their abilities to win the Western Conference. I think that. That won't waver until we until we see the actual matchups. Yeah, yep. I, I still say that they're the favorite, but then if they get matched up against somebody crazy, I might change. Like, oh my God, they got a really tough path. They got to go through this team and that mm -hmm. team. Maybe I'm a little bit hesitant, but right now they are the most reliable. They starting five is so good, but that six through everything else, very questionable. Yeah, it's very tough for me to believe in that. Well, the rest of those, the roster of, other than the top five. So that's that's respectable. Cause like in a playoff series, I know your rotations get shorter, but you still need reliable guys. What do we say about the Pacers? I don't know what to say about the Pacers. I, the, the thing I wrote, I just I'm not, you know. With the offense, keep up in a playoff series. But Capital I still count. think they're a team that they have enough to where they can still put up points. And it seems like them in close games somehow or some way, in clutch situation, they seem to get timely stops. Somehow their clutch defense seems to be better than like the rest of the game of the defense. So. I trust them in a playoff series. I don't really trust. I, I used to trust them. Or like I felt like they could maybe get out that first round and you know have like some luck in the postseason. But I feel like it's gonna be hard, man. Your offense got to be there every night. But luckily they have Siakam now, and Siakam just gives them a different look than he just does. like he does. giving it to Tyrese Halliburton and making him create. Now you have a legit guy who was a number one option on his previous team, and he closed out games for them. So I think it's good to have a Pascal next to. Tyrese right now. I'm going to try to see what their defensive rating is since the Pascal Siakam trade. Uh, I'm pretty it, sure it's it been got better. better. It did get and better. And it's kind of interesting. I didn't think Siakam would boost the team's defense. I mean, much. I think if you just boost size a little bit, you just already, you already kind of like put more of a blueprint in for defense. It's hard to guard when you're just like everybody's 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, I don't eat me no more. I'm Pascal. I like Siakam. I like that. <laughs> okay. I see you over there freestyling. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, man! The Pacers need more defense. That's just. I would have loved to see them get Caruso. If they would have came out of the deadline with, with Caruso and Pascal. Okay. Yeah, I like that team. They've been twentieth since Pascal Siakam trade, which is so better which, than twenty eighth. Yes, which uh, is where they were before. I was about Slow to say, what was Slow the Mavericks been too? Because yep. I feel like they're in that same boat. It's like they just need like the offense can carry you, but you just need a little bit of defense where it's passable. You know what I'm saying? So, what defense is passable to you? I think around that mid, like around 15th. I think it's yeah. like Demel said. It's more so the timely stops. Like, yeah, over the course of the NBA game, like people are just gonna score. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's you can't be dwelling on no basket that was made in the first or whatever. But it's like once it comes down to that fourth, and you know people are starting to tidy up, like you, that's when you really got to get those stops. Yeah, I wonder what their crunch time defense is because whenever I'm watching them in close games, it's, they seem to be doing pretty good defensively. What's the next team? Pelicans. Mm -hmm. Still potentially the most dangerous team to face in the playoffs. Cap uh, or no cap? I'm going to say cap. I'm going to say cap, too. They don't really put fear in me if, if I'm on one of the higher teams. I just I know Zion and Brandon Ingram are good, but I just don't fear them as well as much. What's your as, assess, as, assessment on them? For me, I, I kind of question whether Zion can be that face of the franchise type guy. Um, just because... He's always out of shape. There's, there seems to be always that consistent thing when they're talking about Zion's not in shape. I know 
this year he's been relatively healthy compared to previous, but like he's normally a guy that's in and out the lineup. Um, and like the production seems to have gone down from what we're used to. We got accustomed to seeing Zion drop 27 on 60 plus percent shooting from the field. He's looking dominant like he's a force out there. I just don't see that same Zion no more. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think so the production, me, or like, I don't think he needs to just have as many points because they got more like offensive What do you think Zion there? averaging? Uh, he's averaging about 21 points, he 21, 22 there. points a game. I don't know what the efficiency is this year, but I know it's around there. 22 points a game on 58% shooting. Mm-hmm. I, five feel, rebounds, I just always five feel assists. when it comes to postseason, at least so far, it feels like Zion, he, he just seems like he's easy to scheme against, right? You know where he's going to go. Obviously, he hasn't like, he's not at his full potential of like playmaking, all that type of stuff. Like, I feel like you can slow him down and worry about the rest else, right? I, I, I when said, they were playing against um, the Lakers the other night, mm-hmm. they were running a lineup against Anthony Davis that was Z at the five. <laughs> yes, bro. Yeah, that blew my mind that they went small ball against Anthony. Yeah. They gave Anthony Davis the ball every possession. Yeah. Yeah. Can't right. do nothing about it. Yeah, Especially with Zion on me. It's an interesting oh, decision. But I like the idea of them running a small five, but not against Anthony Davis. Yeah. You know? There's just no yeah, way. Zion doesn't give you the versatility against a lot of uh, I, I think they had that for like, to go small. Yeah, they had brought Larry Nance back in so fast. It's like we just need some more size. They, yeah, it lasted a few possessions, yeah. and then Larry Nance was right back. Yeah, in they the don't really have a a rim protecting center. Valanciunas mm-hmm. isn't that guy. Mm-hmm. Larry Nance is he's like a four in a way, but he but he also doesn't shoot well enough to put him at the at the four all the time. So you kind of like play him at the. But five you know what happens in NBA uh, history? What a, a four. Becomes a five as the older they get, oh, and Larry yeah. Nance is kind of in that he's right going now. into that mode. Yeah, yeah, he's, that, yeah, he's turning into a five because they're not nimble enough to stay with the rest of the fours in the NBA, and he's still a relatively big body, what six eight ish. Yeah, he's like, yeah, you gonna run some five, and in the minutes, and this is it's been a while since I've looked at this, but after he came back from his injury, like two weeks after that, the minutes with him on the floor with Brandon Ingram were like amazing, and um. It kind of worked out, and all those minutes were him at the five. Like he didn't, they didn't play a traditional five alongside Larry Nance. I don't think at all this season, um, but I don't see them as the most dangerous team or the scariest team or however you framed it. Um, this is a little bit away from me. They're still missing some umph, I think, some shooting. And I don't know exactly what it is, but like because they got so much, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think they were so Dyson Daniels again, man. Golly, the Kings will probably be a scarier team for me than them. I'm not mad at that. Yeah. But Kevin O'Connor had posted something recently that was pretty interesting on um, uh, De'Aaron Fox's, De'Aaron Fox's yeah. shooting. And I was like, wow, I didn't realize that he dropped that much. But, like, let me see if I can pull up the stats. He has said the first 26 games, um, De'Aaron Fox was shooting uh, 21 attempts a game. He was giving you 30 points a game on 58% from the field, six assists, 39% from three, 71% true shoot percentage. In the last 20 games, De'Aaron Fox is only giving you 21 points a game on 18 shots a game with 49% from the two, 39, 33% from three, and 68% true shooting percentage. How many, how many th- uh, three attempts does he have? Um, does it show? Because I feel like – He didn't put his attempts in – I feel like this season a little bit, De'Aaron has fell in love with that three ball. I feel like he at least takes some more, and maybe that could be like a schematic thing, like we want him to shoot the ball more. But I feel like sometimes he doesn't get as downhill as he, he, as he could. I feel like I've seen him pull up – in transition yeah. for a three ball before. Here this is. is not D-Fox type of thing. Last year, 25% of his shots were three-pointers. This year's 35%. So, yeah. Um, so he's sacrificing 3% at the rim, and then a mid-range shot, he's sacrificing about 8%. That um, mid-range shot last year was deadly. Money. He bro. closed out so many games. That's why he was the clutchest player in the league. Mm-hmm. With it. Oh, that's like, my favorite shot in basketball, man. And like and his, his efficiency at that mid-range shot has dropped. His long mid-range – Shot was uh, 46% last year, was a 73 percentile. This year's 37%, which is 22 percentile. Um, but overall, including the short, he's dropped about 4%. So it's not that big of a difference. But that 4% is a difference between the 93rd percentile and the 64th percentile. So, yeah. Um, it's tough. I it, mean, it's hard. Yeah. Luckily, Sabonis is playing amazing. Right. So, like, holding it down. Yeah. So, like, his struggles haven't been noticeable mm-hmm. because Sabonis is playing so damn good. The next two teams, I don't really know what to say. The Pistons and the Raptors. Um, I, I want to do something deserve. around Jaden Ivey, but we talked about Jaden Ivey last episode. Jaden Ivey is the best piston, cap or no cap? <laughs> <laughs> That's cap. cap. That's cap. Don't they just, got Cade now? It's Cade. It's Cade. Okay, yeah. He might even be second behind Durham. They got Kevin Knox. No, they don't. He got traded and waived. They, they traded him. 
He might come back. Though. Yeah, way. <laughs> you sound like you his brother or something. Because, bro, he was doing this thing for Detroit. Mike. He wasn't doing that much if he didn't know he, he got traded. He did this thing. <laughs> what, do you, what is that? I don't know. Give, I don't... Me, give me. Look, what does that look, mean? You have to put it in perspective. It's just Kevin Knox. He was a seventh overall. Doing player. his thing is he was in the rotation. You're talking about Fortnite. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. In yes. the rotation. Games on the 28 in game. He was in the screen. rotation. Right. Yes. Kevin Hayes was doing his thing, boy. He was. He was in the rotation. <laughs> <laughs> That's like when I was talking Joe about Harris? Pascal <laughs> doing his thing. I was like, Pascal be taking threes, don't he? Yeah, he was shooting the twenty three percent. Like he do take them, no? Uh, okay, well, you said the Pistons and the, and the Raptors. Did y'all see the Scotty Barnes stuff yesterday? Yeah, when he walked off, he the walked court, off the court um, before the game ended. And Raptors fans, not just Raptors fans, but the general was like, that's just not what you want to see. Obviously, they lost by thirty to one of the worst teams in basketball. Vic had an amazing, phenomenal game, and he walked off and. Um, all of the you always shake hands at the end of the game. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, you don't. Or at least stay into the buzzer. That you do. You don't. Isaiah Thomas shake says hands. shake hands. Never. <laughs> you don't. You don't know the story. <laughs> oh, him and Mike. Well, yeah, in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I he went on Team USA. You have not seen LeBron just walk off court. That's true. Yeah, LeBron has. Now that. in a playoff series, you're supposed to shake hands. But, but in the regular season, I feel like it's just. That's whatever. That's should, I think the bare minimum of sticking with your team to the end of the buzzer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If yeah. you want to shake the opposing team hand, do it. If you don't, that's fine too. But like sticking with your guys, even though y'all lost about 30, is something that's important. But, but I feel him. He's you young. lose about yeah. 30. I, I might walk off on y'all ass too. <laughs> yeah. Like get up. I don't even want to see your face, let alone the opponent. Mm hmm. <coughs> We've done that with Pro Am before. Let somebody have a couple bad nights. I don't want to play. I we just. I want to. We used to have it so like we cannot play with these two players on the court at the same time. Yeah, it is so real funny thing. that pro am. What we'll do is somebody not playing good, and we'll just be like, "See if Kyra want to play." We won't even <laughs> say like, "Are we?" Gonna, we be like, "You can't bring that build out here no more." <laughs> he just not helping the team. Like me and my Giannis build. Uh, yeah, you don't bring him Stop out. Stop no calling that a Giannis <laughs> build, bro. <laughs> that might be uh, JJ Hickson. Right. Right. Come on, bro. The, the NASA build. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> Um, Piss has been looking better And then The other team was who again The Raptors, Raptors Have looked the opposite of better But their pick is top Whatever protected Go get your pick Retain your pick So I don't got nothing to say Other than that yeah. The Rockets The young guys should be Handed the keys next season Cap or no cap um, They starting to show progression I mean Thompson is really a good uh, ball, yeah. Is a video game guy So you're saying More so like a man should be getting more minutes than Fred type of thing. I'm not saying he should be getting more minutes, but he has to – not more minutes than Fred, but he has to be largely included. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I, I, No cap. He had I a four-by-five last night. Yeah. He was a, he was man. He mm-hmm. played in a dunker spot a little bit at the close of that game. But yes, he, he did. still nice. Yeah, you know the top of twins going to be in that dunker spot <laughs> waiting. <laughs> the seeing Shangoon's progression this year has been amazing. Mm-hmm. So – I. I'm only more excited for everybody else. You got him, Jabari, Green, mm-hmm. Tari. Yeah. Tom I still don't know how to can get well soon, Tari. It's Jaylen been so Green, long. Though. It has been. Jalen Green's still a very hard player. To but you know age. what? He's been playing so good over the last three or so weeks. I'm starting to get more familiar with, with my expectations for Jalen. Mm-hmm. I would say no cap to that. I think they're, like, they're showing like the rawest forms of themselves in this new team. Like I think we've seen the hub with Shingoon and the players around him. They can fit. I think they're just still like figuring themselves out in the NBA, like Jalen Green and, and Jabari Smith. Like they could be really contem- complimentary to like what they got going on with Sangoon. So I think they just got to get a little bit more sharp, but it comes with time. But now, in our last few teams here, um, the the Blazers are here, but more so than anything, <laughs> let's just talk about DeAndre Aiden. Okay, what's going on with him? Did we talk about that last? Phoenix episode? wasn't. Yeah, Phoenix did. wasn't wrong. I think that was like his first team was with Phoenix, and we seen how good D uh, D A could be. He gonna make the cap and no cap for his favorite team. Um, <laughs> Blank stare. Cap and no cap. They trade one of the guards this off season, other than Scoop. So I'm talking Anthony or Shaden Sharp. Well, they're not gonna trade Shaden. I don't know if he got as much value. Who was looking at Shaden Sharp like we Shit. need him? I don't know. He was giving you over, the 16, point, hey, over man, 16 points a game. Out. For what? Well, that's the deal. No, we don't have nothing. Right. To give you don't value him as much where you're giving up something substantial. You'll take him for sure. Yeah. But it's like you trade Anthony Simons and you're getting back a return. Yeah. I'm I'm just curious to see what they do with the three guards. It's kind of hard to – you can't really develop three guards properly. Yeah. Um, I have not watched any Trailblazer game for a minute. I think that overtime a few no, nights ago. The Blazers – Bill, the Blazers choose Scoot over Anthony K. 
cap or no cap? No cap. No cap. No cap. I think I think they're gonna go in the direction of Scoot. He was the number three pick. I Has just, nothing to do with shit. Because if he didn't perform, I don't give a damn. When he was performing Dookie, I care less that he was a number three pick. Yeah. I'm still saying no cap though. <laughs> but that's me as a guy that has not watched them play together or who are you choosing? <sighs> not not thinking about what they would do, but what would you do? Have to go school, right? School ain't got no return to trade. I, yeah, and I just I think maybe the ceiling on school is a little higher. Okay. I think defensively he brings a lot more too. That's what Chelsea looking for. Vic is too good for rebuilder. Spurs need to be buyers this summer. No cap or no cap? Cap. It's over. This was the year of a rebuild for the Spurs. It is wraps. You go try to compete for a playoff spot because this man is one of the 25 best players in basketball already, and he's just going to get better. How exactly are they doing that, though? They Taking have all, all the draft assets. capital plus some Atlanta Hawks picks. And you try to go. They have tradable contracts. When you, when you want something, you can get it. Yeah, I just think it's easier said than done to just do it all in one offseason to where this team is going to go from being he's that good. the worst just, team in the West go invest. to just – being a playoff contender, and in I one feel season. like, but I, I honestly think that I'll on paper, this, cap. this team is good enough to be in contention. They just don't have certain shit. I, I yeah, I don't think they're that far away. I, I saw, I and that's crazy be, to say considering they they're are the worst, they're the worst team in the West. But you just be yeah. buyers. That's mm -hmm. why you got to be buyers. With but the, also all of the draft the, assets have, they have, you, they you can, can be have buyers. those draft assets. But you have to also understand that teams have to go, gonna want to give you stuff that's gonna help you compete. Trey Young may be a team that's rumored, but what if what if the Hawks look at that package and be like, I don't really want Kelton Johnson and some picks. Then I'm gonna say okay, and I'm gonna go to the next. I was gonna say, and then guess a, what? A you, good a, point guard might do wonders for this team, and they don't gotta be Trey Young, it don't, but it, it, have to be just Trae a Young. legit point guard. But the fact that you have picks, mm -hmm. picks will be valuable. That's what you need. Yeah, I guess. But you either I have players or picks. I just still don't look at this team and say. They need a two few two players or so, and then they're a team that's in. So where are you people. looking at them? Like? I think they're a team that's a few years away from legitimately Why? competing for a Why are they years spot. away? Because I think they're still very young. They're missing pieces. But Vic we're, we're has, saying buy-in. We're saying buy-in to talent. Like, Vic is good, but what? what are you Vic about? is still really good, but I still think he can get better. Well, he's like going it. to get better. That's why he wants <laughs> no, to No, no, I'm saying. Like, he's got better a, already through the course of the season. He is, and I, I'm excited to see the next two levels of Vic. Mm hmm you might see the next level of the two in 10 games. No, he really has leveled up that much between game one versus game I know, game he's made 50. that rookie of the year thing, like, no debate. It's no question yeah. no more. Um, but I know I 100% agree that this is a team that shouldn't be sitting on their hands thinking, oh, we're going to develop Blake Wesley. We're about to develop this random player that we use the first round pick. And no disrespect, I'm just saying in general. Like, yeah. that's what their goal is right now in time. When you have a player of this caliber – when you, when you have Bron come into the league, you have a next generational player. Them generational players don't sit around Bron for three years. Bron got to the finals in year three, right? No, Bron come was on. like that. Bron got to, to the playoffs year one or near playoffs year one. Near. You um, know what else we get to see? Melo went to the playoffs year yes, one. Yes. Yeah, Stop playing with him. We can see Greg Popovich back in a row where like, he's actually like competing for maybe that playoffs. But I know like – He's okay with the rebuild and everything like that. He enjoys seeing it. But this is like, as a, one of the best coaches of all time, sometimes it's, you want to see you compete for a championship. That boys can go out there and get Garland. Sure. I just don't see – what would the – so you think the Cavs would take those draft picks, Keller and Johnson? I would think you would just have to expand it to flip. They get Garland. The Cavs get somebody else who's decent. And then <laughs> yeah. a team that gives up somebody else's decent gets the draft capital. That might be decent. Yeah. I just don't. I know Kelton Johnson's like the one that makes the money match for them and get mm -hmm. that big, that that bigger player. People, people would so bite like, on Kelton Johnson. It's just what? You, 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 it's the draft picks. The yeah. Kelton just make the money match. But we're not gonna sit up here and act like Kelton Johnson is the worst NBA, the worst player in the NBA. No, he's not. Zach Levine, right? When he had his teams, the Spurs were one of those teams. I, I'm not saying that they trade for him, but I'm saying that. If Zach Levine at his big old age is like, hmm, I want to go, I would be cool with playing with one of the worst teams of basketball because that tall fella, then I'm sure that might happen to other players as well. Like they see Victor Wimbanyama and say, oh, I would like to play with that player. Zach Levine doesn't even rub me as a Spurs guy. Not at all. And he also seems like a guy that I don't want him playing with Vic. Hey, but guess what? <laughs> He's available. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's available. We'll take Kelder. Don't even throw no draft capital. We'll Zach take Kelder. Give Kobe the ball. What you think he's going to do to Vic? 
I believe in Zach enough to give the ball to the 7'4 <laughs> player. That's that's what I'll say, Zach. We steal on your side, man. Uh, that'll make them from an 11 win. To, well, I think they might. They're going to end this season with like 23, 4, 24 wins. I think they can make a few moves to end up 35, 36 next year. That's not and too that's bad, fine. considering the fact that you got to think Devin Vassell also gets better. I mean, you got to give him. I would try to get LaMelo. When we were doing that draft episode or that trade episode, I was going to call um, from one of my teams about LaMelo. Like, what? How are y'all thinking about LaMelo? Is he an untouchable piece to the to the like can, really, really untouchable? Not just like fake untouchable. Yeah, you but got is he Brandon Miller doing his thing by itself. You gonna I have think another for tough right now, He's legitimately untouchable. Okay. I respect that. I respect that. N- next team we have is I also think he got the poison pill thing in his contract now because he got the uh, extension. True. The Suns. Can they make it work with this current with the current role players that they have? Cap yes. or no cap? Uh no cap. Um they have Thaddeus Young now. Just sign. Thaddeus Johnson. Everything is possible when Thaddeus is on the team. Uh, yeah. But no, but to realistically, I do believe they have enough to um, do some things. They're not my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, but if they did it, I'm not like, oh, my God, this is a surprise. Because I genuinely do believe in those top three guys, especially now that Bradley Beal is playing better and more familiar with his role and everything. Now, he did gamble in that goddamn Steph Curry pass a couple nights that ago. That was crazy. Um, but that pass by Brendan was perfect. No, Dr- who in it? was Brendan. Yeah. yeah, he threw it perfectly. Yeah. He threw it, like, right behind Steph. Mm-hmm. Where if he would have threw it right to Steph, Bradley Beal would have stole that. They said yeah. it was like a – um. It's like a soccer pass. It led him to a specific yeah, spot, led him right create, spot, which is mm-hmm. crazy. Um, but no, I tr- I mean, not that I trust the role players so much. I just trust the top three guys and hope yeah, that the I role like, players can fill the gaps. Yeah, I feel like the same thing with like uh, the same thing with kind of with the Celtics. How they're like they mostly on jump shots. I think even the game where it was when they went against in that Warriors game, D Book was kind of carrying them down the stretch, mm-hmm. and all those kind of came down to like he was taking some tough mid range jumpers. And it's just like, can you survive 16 games with that? They can with the talent, but it's just like, I just wouldn't pick him as my favorite either. Yeah, I trust him. Yeah. You got Kevin Durant, Devin Booker. I, I think the sky's the limit for you. When they hit their threes, though, that's when they really on fire. Yeah, when Grayson Hallett, when he's having a game, oh, lights out. Yep. How many more teams we got? Like three. Okay. Four. I'm getting tired. Uh <laughs> The Thunder, youth and experience will come to bite them in the, in the postseason. Cap yeah, or no cap? No cap. No. Um, the way I kind of looked at it is just like this is their first time being an actual like playoff team and going into that. I think the rookie wall is re- real. I don't think they hit it yet. I think they've been so damn good. I think they're going to hit some type of wall that they like. They just didn't know they needed a face yet when it comes to playoff time. And it's it's going to probably like going to go into like now we know we what we have to work on. You know, now we know we have to fix. Yeah, I, no cap. Just because they went into the deadline, I thought they were going to get a big. They didn't. They So they're kind of just relying on Chet. And I think when it comes playoff time and you're going against one of those physical bigs, being in foul trouble is just inevitable. And I just think that could be something that just can come through and hinder them. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's a big part of it, Derek. Um, in order to make the run, you'd have to go through uh, Jokic yep. in one way. Carl Anthony Towns, Rudy Gobert in another way. Sabonis. Anthony Davis, Sabonis. Like, those are players you got to guard up. A combination of those. You're yeah. not seeing them all, but a combination of those. Even potentially Zion. And we just, on how you match up. We just haven't yeah. seen a team go from no playoff experience <laughs> to the team that yeah. fast. And is it possible? Sure. But I just think that it's a little bit. Even the OKC of, of previous years that made the big run, they had made, I think, two straight playoffs before that. One of them was a first-round exit, and then either second-round or conference finals the year before they made the big jump to the NBA finals. And they were super young as well. Yep. Yeah, this feels year. like the first team, first year of it. And then if you ask me the same Next question year. in year two, I'm like, hey, they might be the favorite. You know, I, yeah. I don't know. But right now. You got to get through this honeymoon phase. Yes, we got to see. Gotta hit the wall. I thought that they was going to have some type of shooter aggression, and it hasn't happened. That's what I said. They've been so good. Shot. They've been so good. Like, they haven't hit that wall at all. And it's just like, I feel like it's inevitable. And it's kind of like Gideon and Dora are just easy to scheme against. I know Gordon Hayward's going to hey, help that. But Go- Dort. Dort yeah. is more likely to, like, Dort make some. Dort is shooting, what, 45% from three to seven? Yeah, Dort is they, more likely to make some noise. Still, they don't believe it. Yeah, they still, still allow yeah. him to shoot. It's it. like the old R.J. Barrett thing from a few years yeah. ago. We, you shot forty percent in the regular season. It's the playoffs now. Do it now. Um, Tim but Wolves. Man, he's been really good. Tim Wolves can overcome lack of threes and firepowering offense to be a real contender. They don't shoot a lot of threes. Y'all historically went off when y'all was talking about the offense type thing. Mm-hmm. You still feel the same way? 
Well, I say because because their defense is so damn good. I think that the, it can make up for some of the lack of offense. And I think in a playoff <clears> series, <throat> when the game slow down, I think Cat and Anthony Edwards is enough to get you through. What's so you have them as a real contender. Yeah, I have okay. them as a real contender. Just checking. I don't know. They feel. I feel like they're one of those real like grit and grind teams. Yeah, and I just don't remember like. Besides, when's the last time they really got to like a grit and grind Both team made it to the championship? Miami Heat. You know what I'm saying? It's Miami, Heat take- Miami Heat. That's I mean, it yeah. 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 was none but grit and grind. They had no offense. Yeah, it is. That's the right answer. <laughs> I was, say, I was thinking, I was thinking, <laughs> winning the finals. Oh. That's why. But getting to the finals, Miami has done that two times at this point. Same way. You want to check? People be just talking. Um, here. The, but the, <laughs> diff- <laughs> the difference <laughs> is, even the, the, so, the year that they first made the NBA Finals. They were the number one team in three point percentage and or in attempts and top five in percentage. So even though their offense was like not amazing, we knew that they are the best shooting team in all of basketball. Last year when they made it, all of that flipped on its head. They were a very poor three point shooter team. They didn't get a lot of attempts up, but when they became healthy again, that number flipped on its head. I don't think there's a flip for the Minnesota Timberwolves. This is not a team I look at in the playoffs to say now they're going to start shooting threes at a high percentage. Mm-hmm. Now. Cal Anderson and I trust Cal Anderson to an extent. Now Cal Anderson's gonna look like the Cal Anderson of last. It's like I just think that they're a little bit far away from that. Um, even in the grit and grime mode that they're in. Mm-hmm. Um, and yesterday, another really big win against the Clippers. Rudy and then, that's another thing uh, too. Is I felt like up. the difference was between them and the Clippers is I felt like that paint defense and then a lot of it was Rudy Gobert. Yeah. And I was thinking about this too. It's just like. They have to do their best to keep him on the floor when it comes to playoff time because that's when they're at their best, too. Yeah. You know, we know we've seen Rudy Gobert have troubles where it's like he got to step out to the perimeter. Even if he's still on the floor, like they have to keep him in the paint, you know? Hey, it's not happening this year. He not getting played off? What scenario does he need to be at the, at the, at the perimeter? Luka Doncic. I'm, That's I'm, like one of the main guys, but like it's not like they're sw- they have with Jaden yeah. Daniels and Anthony Edwards. Them brothers f- screen they navigation is crazy. Yeah, they they yeah. fight through all of that. So yeah, we gonna objectively we're, you're gonna get switches where Rigo Bear is guarding a ball handler. Yeah, but it's not like when they play against the Clippers where it's like we're running five out. Terrence Mann go do they thing. could if they do your lineup of Maxi Cleave with PJ Washington. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> true. But if you Chris Finch, you like let Maxi beat us and. In that game seven versus the Clippers, they said, let Terrence Mann beat us. Yeah. And he did. You know who's going to be that man? Tim Hardaway Jr. going to beat them. Like, like, hey, I'm, bo- I'm bordered with the Minnesota Tim Wolves, man. Some days I'm like, yeah, I feel like they can contender. Mm-hmm. They can contend. And some nights I'm like, ah, when I watch a fourth quarter and they they crumble and, and, and Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards are taking either really tough shots or turning the ball over, those are the moments. Like, you can't have two games like that in a playoff series because you're going to lose that series. Yeah. But then there's other nights, like last night, I'm like, man, this team looks dominant against one of the two hottest teams in basketball. So I'm I'm borderline on my opinion on whether or not they can really contend right now. I think it's fun watching those upper seeds beat up on each other. Yeah. Sometimes I, one of them just gets the upper hand on the other one and it just looks like, damn, are they really that much better than them? But then on the flip side, they might also get their ass in it in, 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 in a month or so. That's so, parody, yeah. baby. Yeah, it's so crazy with we the love league it. right now. We got another one? Was that, was that the last one? No, we got two more. I'll bet. Let's get it. Uh, at full strength, the Warriors can still be should still be feared as a playoff contender. They're looking, Cap or no they're cap. looking better. They're they starting really to turn really the tide. Bro, they look recently. really good. So like, uh, Draymond, Draymond Green, Green is, has been phenomenal. And mm-hmm. also, that game against the Suns, I like it. It feels <laughs> like I know he's a guy that teeters the line, uh-huh. but they need it. Yeah. They don't need him to be out there being nice, uh-huh. calm. They need that's that true. fiery, that's true. that fiery in, engine. But they, they need him to need do it. That. But they need him to do it in the way that he's doing it, uh-huh. not crossing the line. Mm-hmm. Stay where you're at. Yeah, you could talk your shit to Nurkic. I love that. Tell him he's too small when you put him in the back. Yes, do that. They need that. They need that toughness. And Draymond bring that. We need you to look at Cra- Dr- Katie at you locker room and say, "Yes, me." Like they need that. They need that. That that's. I wouldn't piss off Kevin. I like that. I, was gonna say, I like I, that. I don't think they. It's just like he's got to be doing it for himself at that point. Like he's not. Nobody's like feeding off that energy except for maybe his team, which they could use. But it's like. I think the the reason they kind of turn it around is obviously Draymond's back. Steph Curry's been aggressive, man. Yeah. It's not just like let me get the catch a shoot and the flow to offense. He is actually taking like the initiative on a lot of these offensive possessions. And it's Steph Curry. He's going he's going to produce. So and Gary I've been Payne's liking him a lot more. Off the bench has been really good for them. Mm-hmm. He's been coming in. He's been a little spark plug for them as well. Um, 
Because they stuck in unit kind of. It's a little. I'm not. It, it's a little iffy. Hey, Chris, Looney, will be back. Chris Looney, will be back. Don't Looney, Looney isn't um, being a Looney we're used to either. Yeah. Don't worry. That's come play, a, yeah. come play all time. He's going to be back. But you know I what? Would, I would, Wiggins I would has so. looked a lot better. Wiggins has. Clay Thompson had 26 last Clay night. Clay Thompson had a really good game yeah. last night. I hope that's the click. <laughs> you knew it was going to happen because the report just came out like, I'm open to a smaller role. And you knew he was just going to have a really good game, bro. But I'm happy that he has that mindset, though. Yeah, yeah get that, that monkey off open. the back. We ain't yeah. got to worry about the contract. Yeah. Like he said, he looked up to Reggie Miller and Ray Allen. He said they were effective into their late 30s. I want to implicate that. So in order for you to do that, you got to buy into that role. Yeah. He definitely can replicate that. And uh, then guess what? Now you got now you got five rings, maybe. Maybe. So he can have some. He can do this now instead yeah. of the foe. <laughs> sacrifice. Hey, sometimes some good come with sacrifice. Always. So a lot of always come good. Last one, the Wizards. Jordan Poole shouldn't be a part of the long term plan. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a yeah. That's a given. Yeah. Yeah. And he just it sucks that he wasn't what they thought he could potentially be. You know, he showed he did, so yeah. many flashes with the Warriors of what he could be. What if but next year he just get it together? He could. That's, yeah. the, that's the thing. Yep. He definitely could. This is his first year being, like, the guy. And, yeah. and without him, like, this is his first year post being punched in the face. So and it's, it's like, also so much easier when you're playing with Steph Curry. Everything is. I feel like it's just, you're not getting They have a system over there. Yeah. And is Draymond's also the primary facilitator and everything. Jordan Poole kind of, like, he was in the right, he was in the perfect situation for what he does. Yep. Unfortunately, it didn't work out because of other reasons, but hopefully he can bounce back next year. The Warriors found that balance to, like, this is just enough Jordan Poole. You know yes, what I'm saying? Yes. Somehow, it was just, this is enough of it. In the right playoff series, they knew how many minutes we could play him. <laughs> yes. They knew we were playing him 20 minutes, and we were letting him have his thing, or we were going to play him, like, maybe 30, 25 minutes. Like, yeah. they knew exactly – what playoff series mm-hmm. and how many You can't do that as a number one. Oh, I don't even know what to say number one no more. You can't so even do that as a, like a Steve top Kerr option. had it perfect. I don't know they, how he knew which playoff series he knew how many minutes he could play in. They he figured knew. out the perfect amount of minutes for Jordan Poole. That's, that's like for – that's real. Yeah. Now in, in Washington, it's like no consequence to doing stupid stuff. Here go your 36 minutes a night, bro. Yeah. And you know who should be <laughs> getting those opportunities? Bilal. Well, he get it. Benny Abdiya has been mm-hmm. phenomenal. He has. He I, has. I think he's a guy that might not stay with that team. Him and Corey Kisper are two people. I'm like, get get them yes. somewhere that yes. they can play real yes. basketball, please. Absolutely. Because Denny's so good on both sides of the floor, too. Yeah. yeah. Now, in the playoff series, I'm scared to have pe- people scheme against his non-shooting ability. But playoff series, watch the Wizards. Those things don't go hand in hand. Yeah, they won't be in a playoff series for a long time. For a little so. minute. It's going to be a while. Are they the least likely team to make the playoffs anytime soon? Of Ooh. all the bottom teams, let's let's take a let's take a look at the so candidates. You got the Pistons, the Spurs, mm-hmm. them. You got um, the Toronto Raptors. Yep. Um, Wizards, Charlotte, maybe. Charlotte. I don't Portland. know. Portland, maybe Charlotte. Portland. Portland is year one of that rebuild. I just I don't know. They have yeah. like time. They also have more talent though. No, they they for sure got more. Yeah. talent. Yeah. I like Bilal, man. I like. Bilal. I do. I do. I like him too. I think this, besides the Spurs. The Blazers probably had the most talent of the – well, the Memphis – I'm not counting them because they have an all-NBA guard coming back. So, and a DPOI, they don't count. The Pistons are better than the Wizards now. Yeah. Um, it might be the Wizards. They might Damn. be the last bottom feeder to actually be relevant again. Yeah. Wow. But, again, this is year one of the rebuild, so, like, that makes the yeah. most sense. Mm-hmm. Like, Detroit has been rebuilding for six years, so you better have a better chance in the first year rebuild. That's, but – being in the rebuild for six years and then having this type of year where you lose 27 <laughs> games in a row, yeah, you don't do that in your six-year rebuild. You That's barely do that in any years of no rebuild. <laughs> <laughs> it might have to be year one for that to happen. Yeah. To be in year six losing 27 games straight is actually kind of insane. Yeah. That means that there was no development. Phenomenal work, P, on the cap and no cap. All 30 teams talked about Now, I'm just saying it again. Numbers on the board is the only show that's giving y'all 30 teams. Even some of the teams might have been 30 seconds. We know. also invented cap and no cap. <laughs> see, I see that a lot that's now. That's a fact. We invented that. So. A lot of a lot of platforms do use it now. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. From the <laughs> early days of being in the basement. Cap and no cap. Damn. Came a long way, fellas. Came a long way. Came hey. From your basement to being here. If you enjoyed the episode, 
leave a like, subscribe. The boys, like I mentioned, will not be here for a Saturday episode, but we will be back in about seven days with a little bit more, and we will be shooting content at All Star. What I do want to say, if you're at an all, if you're at All Star and you see us, do not feel afraid to come up, get a pic, talk, ch chat it up with us. We you might get yourself in a vlog. Yeah, just let us Thanks. just let us know, Our man. Our camera guy gonna be active. Way too often do I see people like, was that y'all at this? Like, man, you should have just. You know, damn us. well it's only one Pee Wee to plug. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll we'll be there uh, working. Media credentials. Ah, we gonna be working, feel man. Good to be credentialed up for the. Ah, man, it's, man. it's love. It's love. Um, ah, what are we supposed to be? Yeah, credential five. I just not, made that up too. Not sitting in the restaurant watching the game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you was in the restaurant watching the game? Because <laughs> I was in my hotel room. Oh, I was in the sure. lobby. Oh, yeah. See, but we went at the game. We gonna be there, uh, and we'll see y'all soon. Peace.